We're excited to have today's panel of photographers with us. First, Nancy McKenzie, who was our judge for the first live stream, has graciously, has graciously offered to join us tonight. Welcome, Nancy. Uh, good evening, everyone. Excellent. We also have our own Mike Thomas to bring his unique vision and storytelling expertise to the panel. Welcome, Mike. Hey. We're uh, we're trying a new format. Um, we're we're constantly uh, we're constantly tweaking a little bit of our of our audio levels. Um, can you guys hear each other, Nancy and Mike? Can you hear each other? Yes. Uh, Mike is kind of faint for me. Okay, Mike might be faint just because uh, we're we're trying to get uh, get him working as much as possible. I'm going to turn the gain up on him and see if we can get that working out. Uh, Mike, can you go ahead and say something for us? Good evening. Okay, that's better. Excellent. Okay, let's try from there. Um, well, uh, as you guys know, we had a, uh, a photography assignment, and I guess I really should go over, and uh, we're going to start with assignment number one, and what I really should do is go back to the, uh, the club page and read the exact criteria, criteria for this photo assignment. Now, just like our digital contest, both Nancy and Mike do have copies of the images. Let's go, let's see. Let's go back through and find these. Okay, photo assignment one. Uh, this is uh, thanks to our ch uh, club president. Bathroom assignment, take your camera into the bathroom, close the door and shoot 75 frames. Each frame must be a moderately different composition. You can photograph anything you find in your bathroom, things in the drawers, under the cabinets or sink, but you can only photograph things from your bathroom and you can only photograph in one bathroom. This assignment will teach uh, photographers how to work a scene. Chip uh, describes the first 12 to 15 shots will be the obvious ones. The middle 15 will require you to think harder, and the last 10 uh, you'll probably just phone in. We've asked participants to submit their first, second, and third images, and for the sake of simplicity, we've asked them to uh, include those images uh, together in, in the Facebook group, but you guys have the, uh, the ability to see them as a, as a, a package of, of images. Are we ready? Okay. Ready. Okay, our first image is going to be um, zero 01, Puddle by the Spigot. Nancy, would you like to start us off? Okay, uh, let me, uh, see, it's coming up here. Um, a very interesting um, abstract is what this came out to be. Um, I'm not really sure I can see, I mean, uh, not really sure I'm seeing exactly where the water is versus the actual granite underneath, but it's, uh, it's an interesting um Basic shot on a graphic quality, yes. Mike, uh, do you have any ideas for this image? So, without the title, I wouldn't have any clue what this is. It looks like something growing in my bathroom. <laughs> um, like the, the got interesting textures. Um, I, I kind of lack a, a focal sense. Um, the, the color palette's kind of subdued. It's an interesting abstract. Great. I think I think you guys are just hit the nail on the head there. It's it's not really something that you can see, but it's it's definitely a fantastic abstract. Let's move on to the next image by Ron, uh, which should be. Oh, did we only have one image by Ron? Let me look at the, look at my sheet here. Yeah, and there's only one. Only one image by Ron. Okay. Well, Ron even included some information because we asked people to give a little bit of information with each of their images, and and Ron wrote, uh, "My weakest effort was an iPhone macro of a small puddle of water in the bathroom countertop." Uh, from washing my hands 5,000 times a day. Uh, he liked the complexity of the granite and the light, subtle reflections of the water. Uh, I might have gone back and tried to introduce a more interesting compositional element to the image in a reshoot and perhaps relight it, but it started to feel like it, uh, like it is an abstract that might give the viewer an empty moment to contemplate the larger meaning of life or something like that. I like that. I like those, those thoughts on that. Yeah, and I do like that he caught most of it. Even though it's a not a black and white photo, he really caught lots of the old nine zones. And so. Well, before we go ahead, Nancy. He, well, he, um, he managed to catch all of the zones in there, even though it's not really a black and white photo. It's you know, I I, I drift back to the Ansel Adam days of you know, pick your zones and got all of them in there. So I gotcha. find that impressive. Let's do a let's do a check. Uh, as I said, we're we're constantly working on the audio. Can we do a check? Uh, how's everybody hearing us in chat? Uh, are we are we pretty well balanced? Hopefully. And while we ask for some uh, some feedback on that, let's move on to the next image. And we have three of these images by uh, 
I'm guessing this is either Bob or Susan. This is either Bob or Susan Weber. Uh, it's likely Bob. And we have three of these, so I'm not exactly sure. Um, it doesn't really meet the, the criteria of, the, of the, the, the assignment, but we can go ahead and talk about it anyway. And we have uh, image number two, three, and four. Mike, would you like to start this one off? So they, they all look like variations of the theme. Um, looks like things they have in their bathroom, and then they created a still life. So, you know, I see hair clips and other things that might be in a bathroom. Um, the, the, uh, the colored stones, I think, are, are, are interesting and, and maybe sort of focused in more on, on them. The abstract itself, I'm not sure what the apparatus with the brushes and stuff are. Um, but, it, you know, it, it's almost like it's a podium with a bunch of spectators around the edge. That's very interesting. It's one thing that that Bob and and Susan are, are good at. They have a lot of a lot of cool things that uh, that they like. Very interesting. I have zero two on here, and I, I really like the long shadow. And that exactly is the is the title: low horizontal light, long shadows. And then uh, zero three looks like shot from from just above, which is fantastic. And then uh, of course uh, you've got a red light and a blue light. Red light on the the right, blue light on the left, and I think that's uh, I think that really works out well. I wish they would have uh, would have followed a little bit on the assignment a little bit more. However, hey, if this is what your bathroom looks like, this is definitely a, a definitely something that 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 passes for that. Nancy, what are you, what are your thoughts? Okay, looking at some set of three images, um, I'm looking technically a it's a great still life if people want a definition of still life. Um, also, I like. This is something I would use in one of my judging classes about when I teach fairboard. Um, the fact that, okay, this is how it looks with a single low light source, overhead light source, notice the difference in shadows, and then two light sources. And, you know, this is how things look with these different, uh, you know, the, the way light can change your image. So I think it's an excellent example of that. The Webers uh, they they gave us a con they gave us a little bit of information here. Um, just for fun, we have not indicated who did which. Uh, we invite club members to figure out uh, and then add comments. Apologies for only submitting one subject for bathroom. Uh, one of us got carried away with lighting experiments, and some of the egg photos uh, also suffered a similar fate. So, so I'm, I'm glad you glad you def definitely sent something in for us, uh, Bob and Susan, and uh, definitely everybody in the chat. This is not this not being a, a club contest. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, give your own thoughts and and comments on each image as they come along as well. Let's move on to the next image. This is uh, Ed and Hinky, and this is number five, Soap Cup. And I'll start with this one. You know, Ed, Ed's just got this amazing eye, um, and and it definitely shows here. And I, I see that Ed's been working on um, probably straightening her, his horizons, although on the top, he's he's a little bit out of a different kind of a perspective. So the, the top kind of suffers where the bottom is is definitely nice and nice and straight. And I love the subtle, the subtle light, and I'm I'm sure this is natural light in his ba his bathroom. It's it's just fantastic. Um, and the only nitpick I have, the very smallest, smallest, smallest nitpick, is to either either go into Photoshop and do a little per bit of perspective warp to get to get the top and and the bottom lines nice and nice and lined up, um, or or just kind of maneuver around uh, as you're taking the taking the shot and, and looking at the scene and getting those lines lined up, which is 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 amazingly difficult so it's usually better to just just pop it in the photoshop a little bit but i'm loving the colors i'm loving the uh the the, the is that ivory soap with a ivory soap dish and just it's this dove. beautiful blue, blue granite is that dove it's dove soap okay go ahead nancy oh i mean i well i love dove soap but also, <laughs> uh, yeah no it's a very very pleasing image i love the way the lights work um so once again you know, it's a classic still life, and um, I I love the way where you've actually pulled the detail off the bubbles on the top when bubbles are left on top of the spark. That's showing up in the. So, just you know, I'm I'm very happy with. It. Nancy, we're getting a little bit of break up from you every once in a while. I don't know if you're if if you're 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 walking a little bit away from the microphone or have something kind of funky going on, but you're you're breaking up just a little bit every once in a while with that that critique. Okay. Um, I'm working, hang on, let me, 
change your ears and see if that helps. Um, we're working off of the household phone, so it should be the, this should be the best I've got. But we'll see. That that was much better. Okay, I'll just use this here. It'll be fine. <laughs> Mike, what what are your thoughts on this image? So what I like is the light on light, and that I can see the dove, and I can see the patterns in the soap dish. Um, but you know, he's the the, the lighting that. That, so that it wasn't overexposed and to those subtle details like the dove, I really like. It's a fantastic image. I don't have any comments from Ed on this. I don't see. Let me just double check here. I don't think I have anything. So let's go ahead to the next image of Ed's. I think he did submit three. Now the soap cup would have been uh, the first image. This would be the middle of those 75 images. And kudos to you guys if you actually did 75. And then the next image will be the, the last. And this is a shower head of Ed. And uh, go, ahead. go ahead, Nancy. Uh, once again, it's very very centered. But then again, you're, you're doing work with still life. You're doing work of, you know, on a very small scale here. Because you're in a bathroom. You don't have a whole lot of play with. I love the lighting on this. I love the reflection. I like the way that's all been captured. Um, I like the depth of field. The grout lines in the back are kind of vague compared to of the shower head itself. So I find this a very nice image. Mike, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so it looks like he's got his focus really, really well uh, on, on spot. Uh, and you can tell the center of that image is very sharp. Uh, the depth of fill, the knife, or the, the tile wall is obviously out of focus. Uh, the lighting is good. Um, uh, I think it will be a, uh, a good uh, good eye uh, for something in the, in the bathroom. I almost would think it'd be even more interesting if if we had zoomed in even tighter on the on the shower head. It becomes more of an abstract uh, image. Right. I'm almost thinking, uh, you know, let let a little bit of that that fall off either the bottom or the top or the side, and uh, and absolutely, I think it would be a really good abstract. I did try to peek to see if I could find out what Aperture had shot this in. If he's in the comments, if you could tell us, uh, that would be great. But, yeah, absolutely, you know, beautiful sharpness. And maybe a little bit do a little bit out of focus on the bottom of the metal ring. But it, it, who cares? Your, your, your focal point is, is those, those nozzles. And, uh, and it, it's really well seen. Um, uh, again, if I had to nitpick, I'm, I'm a big nitpicker of lines. Um, my thought is maybe, maybe if you can – Kind of tilt that shower head to the right a little bit and move your, move your body a little bit right and shoot so that those lines in the background kind of kind of line up or at least get rid of that top right uh, uh, vertical line there probably uh, you know it might help a little bit. Okay, let's go to number seven. This is bathroom mirror by Ed as well. And uh, go ahead, Mike. Oh, so this is a uh, a classic bathroom selfie in the mirror. Um, I'm glad he's got pants on, but it's also a good self portrait. So I can, I can see, uh, I can see Ed, um, through the mirror. Uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. I wonder if he looked all the way in the bathroom taking photos and then he finished up and turned around to leave and there he is, uh, in the, in the mirror. So I think he hit two of our assignments with this one, the self portrait and, uh, shot in the, in the bathroom. And so I think it's a good self-portrait. I, I think I would have liked it straightened a little bit. Maybe that's just me. Um, it feels like a little, a little askew. Yes, I, I just zoomed in a little bit on the stream, and um, and Ed's a little bit out of focus. He he focused on the either the frame of the mirror or the door. But you know what? If if that's and and I love that you brought that up, Mike. I love the thought that. I'm done this damn assignment. Let me turn around. Oh, there I am. There's my last shot. I love the thought that maybe that was Ed's thought uh, thought process on there. And if hey, if if he if he got that close of focus, uh, you know, shooting from the hip, uh, then hey, more power to him. I I love. I just love this shot. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, Nancy. What I would have loved to have seen with this and to take a step closer to that mirror. Cut off. We lose a lot of that um, extraneous tile on the outside. The things that make it look really uneven. Take that one step closer, and maybe you know center himself more in that um, doorway that he's standing in. Get a really neat image off of this without with a little bit less.
extraneous stuff. That makes right. any Excellent. Let's go to our next image, number eight, bathroom by the Webbers. And uh, I already read their, their thought that um, they really didn't have anything specific to say, but they did say they went a little crazy with, uh, <laughs> with their lighting experiments, which is, which is great. That's what this, uh, that's what this is, is meant to do. And at some point before we be, before we get through it, I want to get um, both, both Mike and Nancy's thoughts on, on the assignment together so make sure we make sure we talk about that before we get uh before we get too crazy and i think uh, i think it's uh my go around it, it's a really interesting face um i i guess those are eggs in the middle and uh you know like i said the, the webbers are just so creative when they when they come out to this uh the the, the steel wool the toilet paper the i guess that's some kind of a some kind of a a, a scrubby brush i just think it's fantastic um I really don't have anything to nitpick. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe I would have liked to see the, the the sink and the toilet paper a little bit color color balanced uh, to white, but uh, I'm not I'm not hating the ivory color either. What do you think, Nancy? Oh, you to me? Yes. I'm really curious as to why they have eggs in the bathroom, but hey, you know, <laughs> whatever people, whatever whatever floats your boat. Um, it's, it's a cute image. It's a, it's a very cute image. It's a nice arranged shot. It's a nice developed shot. Um, lighting lighting is decent. Um, we've got highlights off of the um, chrome of the um, hose there. It's, it's a nice little shot. Very cute and um, quite creative. Go ahead, Mike. What are your thoughts? I think I think someone was trying to get all three assignments in one. I think this. <laughs> Uh, a bathroom shot, it's the egg and toilet paper, you know, the white on white shot, and it's also abstract uh, self portrait of Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think it's really creative. I wouldn't have seen this image, uh, I wouldn't have uh, been able to put that together to uh, create a face. Yeah, neither, neither would I. Let's move on. Do we have another one from the Weber? We uh, no, we actually don't. I think we have just one from the Webers. There we have uh, image number nine, which is uh, bathroom number one by Elaine Hambly. And, and Nancy, that's uh, you're you're the start th th this time. Oh, I get to start. Um, I like this. I, I like lighting. I like it. It has a photo with a very strong mood. It's a very solemn photo. It's like. Yes, this is the bathroom. This is all we will see for the next three months. Um, captures that. Nancy, were you were you done? Or did we lose you? Wait, I'm here. I'm here. I, I mean, I'm getting a lot of feedback in my own ear of myself, which is kind of like freaking me out. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. No, it's okay. It's I've been turning. Fun. I've been turning your 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 audio up a little bit, which will give you a little bit more echo. But I, it's only because I'm I'm kind of lo I'm still losing you a little bit, and I just want to make sure we don't lose uh, your your valuable feedback. That's weird. I'll tell you what it is. It's getting towards seven thirty, and our phone is over Comcast, and Comcast gets really stupid at, up here at the lake at seven thirty. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, I do apologize for that. No, hey, no problem, Mike. What are your thoughts on this one? Uh, I can see this being the uh, first of a set of photos going in, you know, the 70 photos going in the bathroom. Uh, you know, this is one one corner of the bathroom. Uh, I, I think the, the lighting is interesting coming in through the window. Um, and the, the, the shadows uh, coming across the uh, the bathroom like that are interesting. Um, I feel like it could have been straightened a little bit. The, the, the edge uh, pull cord on the left uh, is not kind of hanging down straight. For some reason, that draws my eye because it's very light color uh, from the uh, from the, the toilet and the photo. But uh, nice, a nice first image in her study. Fantastic. And and what I did was I put the grid on uh, on in Lightroom, and you can definitely see, yeah, the vertical is is off uh, is off a little bit, and it it absolutely, and Mike is absolutely right uh, with uh, with this kind of kind of peeking over a little bit, and that could be done just by by going to your Photoshop and kind of kind of pulling that back because uh, the the picture frame up here on the top is 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 in uh, is in on the grids. 
And I just looked on the stream, and uh, for some reason, Lightroom's grids just don't want to show up. So no one can understand what I'm talking about anyway. Uh, my thought of this is I love that light. It makes a very, a very, a very interesting and obvious first image. And and Elaine, I would love, 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 love to see a a, a vase with some flowers. Sit them on the back of the toilet and get yourself just a light of the vase and the flowers because that light there with the wall is just just absolutely beautiful. Um, Elaine gives us a. Uh, she doesn't give us any comments on these images, but she has a comment on her on her assignment number two image. So we'll go up to uh, we'll go to the next image. Ten bathroom number two by Elaine. Mike, you want to start this one? Oh, that's creative. I I, I really like that. The uh, with the water flowing, it gives you some add the dynamic feel to the image. Uh, you can see the lighting and the shadow with the Power head. Um, I think I think that's a, a, a nice image. It that might have been interesting to sort of adjust the shutter speed to um, um, create a blur effect on the water. But this is really nice. I, I like. It. I'm glad you brought the, the water, Mike, because I thought the same thing too. It's like you know how how would it be to to blur it? But you know what I. I I really like the the the, the way that the, the water is just I mean there's a little bit of blur but I really like that the way the water is is more stopped I'm not sure if I would like a a, a more blurred out image um, and obviously all the all the lines are kind of kind of going off in their own direction but I I really like I really like the composition of this if anything maybe um, you know this being kind of like a like an anchor point for my eye maybe I'd like to see that that horizontal but it's, it doesn't bother me at all. How about you, Nancy? Um, well, it would make a great Paul Mitchell ad. Um, what I really love in this is the um, shadow of the shower head. Um, what I would love, I would have loved to have seen just a little bit more of that side of the edge so that I could see the full edge of the shadow and have that included. But it's a very, very nice shot, well lit, and well, um, it's a very good capture. Let's go on to image 11 by Elaine as well. And uh, I'm losing track, so I think, I think it might be, uh, might be my go to start. Um, I love it. It's, uh, it's, it's just fantastic. I'm loving the, the, the white towels. I'm loving the, just a couple different shades of towels up top. I'm loving the blue with the, with the yellow of the beaks. Um, the only thing I'm seeing, though, it's, it, first of all, it needs to be, it needs to be uh, horizon corrected. And um, but I, I see some kind of a little out of focus something on the left duck, and I'm not sure if she shot through something or is that a a a, a, a lens flare or something. And I'm not entirely sure the ducks themselves are perfectly in focus. I'm almost thinking maybe maybe these towels. What do you think, Nancy? Um, actually, um, if I was picking up focus, it'd be the fuzz on the top of the duck's head. Mm. To be my guess is where the focus is. I see those, um, you know, phantoms on the left-hand side on the duck and as well as in the cupboard. And I, I would suspect she's shooting through a shower door. Mm. And those are either fingerprints or you know, white gunky marks on the shower. Not that my shower has those, but you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, you know, it's cute. It's creative. It's probably the last shot when you're trying to do all these bathroom shots. Let's do something. Um, but I would have liked to see the focus pulled a little bit more forward and a little bit more depth of field. Great. Mike, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think I would have liked the, the focus on the uh, front of the beaks and enough depth of field to uh, carry it through the eyes. Um, the, um, whatever, whatever's creating the haze in front of the left duck is, is more distracting here. So I think either clean that up uh, before you take the shot, or you go the other direction and really, really have a uh, water droplet, or, you know, whatever cover in the, the glass door. Uh, but right here, it's still, um, you know, kind of uh, detracts from the image. Um, you also could have gone tighter uh, on on parts of this, either on the white towel or even closer on the front or something like that. It might have been interesting. And then the, the a little edge over on the left. Um, 
would have been nice to straighten that out with, you know, Photoshop or something. But these ducks. <laughs> Let's move on to image number 12. And this is Bathroom Number 1 by Christine Milliker. Nancy, would you like to start? Ah, let's see. We have the, the doorknob. I like the way she's got focus in the front and everything kind of goes back from that and becomes more and more um, out of focus, which is got a good commander for depth of field on this. I like the, the lighting, one-sided lighting. It's giving it a good shadow. Um, the, I don't know, the door latch on the right-hand side is kind of like Oh, what, what's that? Which, and I really like this um, doorknob. Go ahead, Mike. Um, yeah, I like the specular highlight from the, uh, the metal doorknob. Um, the uh, lighting's interesting. It looks like we've got light coming from two different directions. There's some kind of goldish light coming from the, the top, and then there's a bright, lighter light coming from uh, like the two or three o'clock angle. Um, the shadows, uh, nice. I, I think the detail and the, the door off nice. And I, I like the fact that it wasn't shot dead center. Um, since I know what that, uh, that thing is sticking off the right of the, the door, it doesn't bother me so much that, that it's out of, out of focus. But another shot with a little more depth of field than having it more in focus might have been worth trying. I agree. I, I, I agree with both of you. I like I like the I like the latch there, but unless unless you gave me a little bit more space, it just seems really pushed up against that right corner for me. Also, I'm seeing a little bit of a of a of a tilt, a little bit of need a little bit of that vertical adjustment. And uh, and if I had any 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 say in it, I would give a little bit more uh, room for that shadow on the left as well. It just seems like it's it's up against the other side and it's it's not like it's it's up against the 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 left side and the latch is up against the right side about the same size uh size but um but yeah that just that just throws me off and this image kind of kind of worried me because I'm I'm kind of a stickler of of color temperature lights in my house so I'm like what you know what what is this and she writes um that all of her photos were taken with her uh, Nikon D850 uh 105 millimeter macro lens and uh a bolt ring flash and I don't know if those those ring flash. I think those ring flashes do have some color temperature gels, but she uh, she just didn't use them here. But I like it. I like the fact that that you've got a nice uh, the nice highlights uh, there, and you've got a little bit of a little bit of an orangish kind of up top. So I definitely like it as well. Image number thirteen uh, is Christine's second image. Uh, Mike, would you like to start us off? Sure, I like this. This is a uh, an interesting abstract. It took me. A few minutes to figure out what I was looking at, um, and I have the same jar of the same two tips of mine in my house, but I never look at it straight above. I always look at the side. Um, I like the texture and the cotton. Um, the depth of field that kind of just throws the counter out of focus is nice. Um, not thrilled with the, the two white spots. That are probably the ring lights or some flash or something on either side. There's one on the left bottom corner and one on the bottom right. Those are the brightest things in the image, and that draws my eye away from the white cotton, that should be the brightest things in, in the image. But I love the texture. I, I definitely agree with you on those highlights. Um, her her ring flash that she has actually has um one flash on the left and one flash on the right, and that's definitely what 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 she's getting at. Um. But maybe, uh, and, and I and I like it. I like I like what the the flash does to the to the cotton balls. But my thought is either either crop in further and and get away from that, or uh, just move down a little bit and and try to accentuate those shadows on the uh, on the surface in the back. I think I think would have made a, a strong image. And and a thought would be even even take the ring flash off and put a standard flash and and let those cotton balls shadow up because I think that would give you a really uh, a really interesting uh, contrasty image. What do you think, Nancy? Um, I really like this image. If you have the context that it's a bathroom and it looks like there's a lot of spider eggs all in one place, uh, which is really awesome. Um, I love the way she's co um, captured the texture of the cotton. I mean, you can see the, seeing the individual filaments. Great focus. I really like this image. And, you know, the, the, the light spots on either side bother me, but 
if they weren't there, the omens would almost be too dark. But I love the way the um, the grays go in and out on those um, cotton balls. I, I like the way they're, they're they're lit. It's just I wish there weren't the lobby lights there, but then it'd almost be too dark without them. So I'm not sure how I'd what I'd want to do with that yet. Gotcha. Let's move on to the next. Um, I, I'm always checking with the chat to see how we're doing on audio. I just changed a, I just changed a little bit of the high end off the EQ to see if we can deal with a little bit with this hiss and uh, and if everybody in chat can let me know how we're how we're doing uh, if that makes a little bit better or not. Let's move on to number fourteen for Christine, and um, I think uh, is that me start. I think that might be me start. Um, I know yeah, what I this is. Start. This is a a shaving brush. And uh, and I love I love the depth of field and and my first thought would have been that you know being kind of a, a straightness junkie I, I I my thought is it's 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 tilted it's it's falling to the left but you know what I really I really dig the um I really dig kind of how there's a little bit of of there's there's fields of focus in this image and they've kind of got diagonals going to the left up top where the where the badger hairs are. And then, kind of looking down, it it kind of gives me almost a like a right angle there, and it and and I don't really know why, but I'm really digging this image. What's your thought, Nancy? Um, yeah, I I definitely like this. It's a nice little piece of macro. Um, my theory. Well, before you explain that it was your the shaving brush, I was thinking that she could get a real close up shot of your head. But anyway, <laughs> um, this is it's a nice. I I love. Yeah, I agree with you on the um. Depths of levels of depth in the back, and as it comes in diagonals as it goes, it's a really nice line. So it's a very int intriguing image. I I like the way she scaled the out of focus white in the bottom up against the most of her the rest of her image. She did a nice job of scaling that. Mike, do you have any thoughts on Christine's last image? Yeah, so I I really like the center of this image. The uh... The sharp part in the in the center, the, the texture, the hair, the bristle. Um, it's well exposed. It's sharp, uh, and it's clear to me that the out of focus areas were done on purpose. In the you know the macro shot, getting them really close to the, the bristle. Um, I, I think uh, it's a well done image. Great. Before we move on, I'll just remind everybody that. Um uh, when is when is it, Christine? The twenty second, Wednesday, April twenty second. Not next week, but the week after is Christine's macro photography program, and uh, and I've seen I've uh, I guess a husband's prerogative. I was able to see a little bit of what she's working on. It's it it looks like it's going to be a really good program. So make sure you put that on your calendars. Let's move on to number was that number fourteen? Number fifteen by Julie Bennett. Bathroom number one. Let's see if Julie says anything here in my notes. I don't have anything for bathroom shot number one for Julie. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, I think it's uh, I think it's Mike's go. Oh, so it looks like um, I'm looking at soap bubbles on something, uh, maybe in the bottom of the tub or sink or or something like that. Um, I like the the blue color that's been. You know, however, we got the blue all over. There's some really pleasant, you know, texture. Um, you know, if I if it were mine, I'd stick it in a folder called Textures because I might use it uh, to blend with some other photo. It's, it's a pleasing background, uh, almost like a, a you know something you'd like to have on your desktop uh, in a kind of image. Um, it's uh, a little little centered, but I don't think that hurts at all. And I think. Uh, on my screen, I really can't tell how sharp the uh, bubbles are or not, but I don't think that matters too much. Excellent. Um, if I were to do anything, uh, I, I feel that it's missing a subject, but I think I think that the texture is is really, you know, it's it's pleasing enough that it doesn't, you know, the bubbles are the the, the subject, and you can kind of your eye moves around around the image. And it's almost it's interesting. Your eye moves up, up, around, and down, and, and just sees that that field of, of you know the smaller bubbles that really has no detail, and it just it just it just uh, convinces your mind to just go around another another time. And I love the way the lights are reflecting. Um, my thought would be is I'd like to see this maybe black and white um, with with a, some contrast pop. And another thought is if you really wanted to put a subject in there, maybe one of those little rubber duckies in the middle or something. How about it, Nancy? What do you think? 
And yeah, I like the way they um, allowed for the their depth of field to be enough that they could get the in focus fairly in focus image of the lights reflected as well as the bubbles themselves. They can't do that with shallow depth of field. So this was a really they, they planned ahead to get this, and it's it's really nice. I like the reflections. The reflections are what catch your eye more than the bubbles. It's like are they you know what what is coming out of the darkness at us? It's all got light. But it's really nice, and I agree with you that this would probably make a fine black and white print. Let's move to number sixteen from Julie, and uh, and and when I was when I was putting all these images in the Lightroom, this one this one actually got me to stop and and like wow, I I really I really needed to take a look at this, and um, it, it, everything about that is is just amazing, and it and it 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 makes you think about what it is, and then your brain tries to figure out you know how. Uh, you know where the mirrors are, and and I'm liking the uh, the pair of threes. I'm liking the uh, the the three major reflections. I'm um, I'm just like I love the tonality of this, and I don't think I would do anything to this image. Uh, I think it's I think it's perfect in every way. Maybe that middle, maybe that middle line here. Maybe uh, uh, put that on a on a on a line. But uh, you know what? That is the the, the smallest of nitpicks. What's your thoughts on this one, Nancy? Um, I just really like this image. Just the really, it's got incredible graphic composition to it. Um, you had whoever did this had to think about where their mirrors were and what they were picking up. This, I like this shot. This is nice. What are your thoughts, Mike? This is a fun image. Uh, I like the leveraging the mirrors. Very graphic quality. I like the black and white treatment. Um, you know, it's. Uh, it really, uh, as you're going through the images, this is a, it catches your eye, uh, so, uh, real good eye, uh, for capturing this corner of the room. Very nice, Julie, very nice. And Julie's last image, uh, 17, bathroom number three. Now, Julie does have a, a comment on this one. She says, near the end, the shot was taken through a blue, res the blue reservoir from her water pick. And you know what? Ah. That, that is just, that's just fantastic because not only does that blue really help, and it's not just a blue; it's this beautiful teal. Um, it's it's just it's just an amazing image. There's a little bit of distortion in that plastic. Uh, what are your thoughts, Nancy? Okay, okay, that makes a lot more sense now, knowing that it was shot or something. Because I'm seeing the distortion, and I'm seeing the um, you know, the effect that it had on the focus and all, and it's like. They're like, how did this happen? But now, now that it was shot through a water pick reservoir, yeah, that was really cool to go ahead and take your lights and then trying to think, no, that's not a reflection. That's the way the lights are looking. Okay. I, yeah, I like this. I like this a lot. It's inter interesting in a um, very graphic way. How about, how about it, Mike? It's creative, uh, you know, from the shot before to this one, uh, to, to find the, uh, the natural filter to shoot through. Um, it adds an interesting uh, 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 perspective to those lights. Um, it, I think I would have liked, uh, you know, a little sh uh, more contrast to the image, uh, you know, a little uh, darks uh, in there, but um, I think really creative, great eye. Fantastic, Julian. If this if this definitely was your last image, um, good job on going back, going back and just and just trying something new uh, that you've already hit in the middle of your in the middle of your images. Number eighteen, Rich Solarski, reflection. Let's see if Rich has any any thoughts on this image. Bathroom photo one. First is a photo of the sink and its reflection taken as the morning sun's rays come through the lattice blinds. I've been noticing this for a long time and finally took the picture. Go ahead, Nancy. Um, yeah, I love the way he light and the um, light and shadow coming in in this and using these to modify those lines. That's really nice stuff. What I would have done with this is I would have backed it off maybe six inches. I'd love to see the bottom edge of that thing. Right from over the bottom. Of the but let, I love, like the fact that the light bulb was captured at the top. I'm going to drop, drop that image, just pivot it back a little bit, that image, get that, like I said, the edge of that sink with where there's really good line, and maybe get rid of the light at the top. But I really like 
What's your thought on this, Mike? So I hope Rich knows that most accidents occur in the bathroom, and I don't know if you're standing on the ladder to shoot <laughs> for a lot. Uh, but it's a great angle, looking down, getting the reflection, the mirror, and then that that uh, pattern of shadows coming across the night as well. I think I, I would have liked a little more contrast on it, and I'm not sure. I I would have to see it straightened to know whether I liked it straightened better than, than this. Right now, it's kind of got a, a little angle going up to the right. Uh, I might have liked like it straight, but I think uh, this might be better. I would have to compare the two to see, but I, I think it's a great eye. I agree with you, Mike. I, I think that I think the angle really helps it out. Um, another great image of this would have been the crop, you know, just into those those hand that that faucet. And and again, I would like to see it at intentionally uh, off kilter a little bit. Um, but I do agree with Nancy as well on on that bottom that bottom basin being cut off. I don't mind that the top basin is is right up against the edge, and the bottom basin uh, the, the the left edge up top, the right edge on the bottom. But I, I want some kind of uh, uniformity on the on the the top and the bottom of that image to kind of to kind of make it all okay for my for my eye. Let's go to the next image, number nineteen, towel rack. Oh, this would be a nice uh, a nice uh, self portrait as well. Rich says, how did I lose him already? Okay, the second picture took several times, but finally got it about uh, about right when redoing it last night. I took several pictures of the towel rack before I noticed the reflection, which I then had to get into focus. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, so this is real creative. I like the graphic uh, element of it. Even without the, the reflection, uh, I think this is a pretty cool image. A lot of these specular highlights in the metal list always get my attention. Uh, and then it has the bonus of a self-portrait in, in there that, that's centered all out. Know, well, not centered in the little circle, but it's in, you know, you know, perfectly framed by that circle. Uh, is uh, a great eye that, that he was able to catch that. Absolutely. It, and, and, and my, my first thought would be to get in tight, crop, crop in, but, there's something about the negative space up top and down the bottom that I, I that I really like, and I, I think that shadow on the bottom really 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 helps nail that down for me. But I, I just absolutely love the, the the reflection of the the rounded part, and I absolutely love the reflection in those two rings on the right as well that are that are kind of little little toruses or little donuts. And I I think that that just makes it as well. Um, I yeah, I still would probably like to see this as a landscape, maybe kind of zoomed in on that, but. Uh, but I, I I see I see what he was going for and and I I really like the composition on this one. What do you think, Nancy? Yeah, I really like it. I, I think compositionally it is very strong. Um, I like the um, the way the reflections are caught on this one of the lighting in the bathroom. Um, I would just love a little bit more focus on the self the um, self portrait part of it. But um, all in all, it's a nice image. Okay, let's move on to Rich's last image for this assignment. Number twenty, inner tube TP. <laughs> and uh, whose whose go is that? I think it's Mike's go. My go? Yes, sir. Oh, this was creative. It, it took me a second to uh, to figure out what was going on, but I love the, the spiraling uh, leading line that leads me down to the treasure at the end. That the invaluable uh, toilet paper setting there. Uh, so that's uh, a very creative uh, shot. Not just fi finding something in the bathroom and taking a shot, but making a photo. That's cool. This reminds me so much of James Bond. So it's kind of like you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm getting this thought of like the the the, tel the, the toilet paper villain or something. Um, and that would be that would be kind of interesting. Like if he had put like a you know like a fake bullet wound on the t the TP or something, you would have gotten a, a big old chuckle from me. But it's still, I still think it's a great shot. Um, I'd like I would have liked to have, you know compositionally, I would have liked to have seen uh, the framing element of of getting the entire toilet paper and the holder in in the end of the, the tube. But it 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 really doesn't bother me the way it is now. Um, maybe uh, you know maybe kind of help help balance it out a little bit. Just just pull a Pull a square or two down to uh, get rid of some of that negative space on the bottom, and I think uh, I think it would have taken a, an already very strong image a little bit a little bit higher. What do you think, Nancy? I like the way it is. I love the way it's just sitting there. That that round image, you know, the way that it 
little tape where, you know, we get the highlight on the front angle there, and then there's a little bit more shadow to the bottom. I'm, I'm good with that. I don't need that extra. I don't need the extra sheet there, John. But what I really love is the way the spiral seam in the toilet paper roll is coming in and dragging the attention into the center. That is very nicely done. Absolutely. Um, it's a really nice shot, really well lit. I'm very pleased with the lighting on this because, um, you know, to get that seam, you know, even fit and visible is a very nice touch. It really is, it's what makes this photo. Rich is saying in the chat, it was very difficult to get this one lined up. I bet. I absolutely bet. Oh, yeah. Let's move on to image number 21 by uh, old friend of the club, Angel Kidwell. Glad to see her uh, Her submitting something to us. And let's see if we've got a – let's see if we've got anything for Angel. That's She's got a, uh, information on bathroom photo number two, not for number one. Um. I'm not in sure. I'm not sure where the focus is on this. Although this is a, this is kind of a small image. Let me see what. Uh, let me see what Lightroom's saying. This image is. Yeah, for some reason, uh, I don't know if if Facebook did this, but for some reason, this is uh, just 225 pixels on the longest side. So I'm gonna. I'm just gonna assume. That, you know, no an angel. I'm just gonna assume that uh, your focal point is right there with these these six lights on the front, and. Uh, you know, I got a I got an immediate like Star Wars vibe on this, and and I think it was really well done. I'd I'd like to see. I'm guessing uh, down here on the bottom. I'm guessing that yellow that almost looks like a Lysol container, uh, which is is definitely completely relevant in in today's day and age. Um, but I really like I really like the chrome. I like the moody lighting lighting on it, and uh, I I just really think that the the moody lighting makes it for me. What do you think, Nancy? Uh, the lighting is what makes this shot. Um... The fact that you can see the, the uh, Lysol wipes over there and the, uh, all the others, it's like you almost are hiding what, the image of what you're shooting, which is this faucet and candle, because of the way you're, you're capturing the light and the reflection. Very, very powerful light, as opposed to, like, I'm taking a picture of a spigot. Um, no, you're using the spigot to show everything around it. It's really nice. What do you think on this one, Mike? Yeah, I probably wouldn't have known what this this was if it hadn't been in in the in the bathroom. Uh, it does have a little sci-fi feel to it with the lighting and the reflection. Um, the brightest thing in the image does appear to be the uh, the container of light bulb lights or whatever that is. Um, it almost distracts a little bit, uh, or it might have been interesting to add another container to balance it out on the left or something. But uh, very creative. Uh, now, for me, the focus appears to be on the top part of the uh, of the faucet there, whatever it is, right at the very top there. Um, interesting image. All right. And great to have Angel putting something in. <laughs> image number 22. I do have a description for this one from Angel. She writes, I tried to balance the container on my speed light. Oh, that okay. Again, again, for some reason, Angel, we have we have a really low uh, resolution photo here. But what I'm seeing is I'm seeing like a ball jar. Kind of looks like uh, one of the ball jars that Christine has has our Q-tips in. And uh, and and wow, what a what a shame that 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 this came out lower resolution. Um, because uh, just just kind of imagining sharpness in my head, this is an amazing image. What do you think, Nancy? I love, um, I, I love the reflections off the glass on the side. You've got you, uh, that's going to be really strong, tight composition graphic image on this left, and then you've got the softness behind it with a uh, lift from the back. It, it's really nice. I'd love to see this full format. This, this is a nice shot. There's some really nice light there. What do you think about this one, Mike? Uh, it's eye catching. Um, would like to see it higher resolution, but the uh, you know, if looking at it, you know exactly what happened. You know what <laughs> what the. Uh, well, I guess we all have one of these containers, the glass containers of Q-tips in our bathroom. Um, you know, so the the reflections on the broken glass, the lighting that she clearly uh, you know put the lighting in there to highlight the the background, the depth of field. I know what those are in the background, even though they're not sharp. Um, 
uh, well done image. I, I also like the, um, the 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 coolness of the glass and the the warmth of the, I guess the stems on the Q-tips. But it's interesting. You also say you've got one of these, Mike. Um, Christine Christine collects canning jars, and I said if you don't do something with these canning jars, I'm getting rid of all of them. So she took one of the small canning jars, put Q-tips in them, and and I had to keep the canning jars around the house. Let's see what we've got for. Image number twenty-three from Angel as well, and I don't have a I don't have a description for this one. So uh, let's go ahead and start with uh, with Nancy on that one. Oh, I know that this, this is the lid to the container that broke. Yep, that's exactly what it is. It's one of those ruby glass lids that will fit down onto a container, and that's that's the lid. Um, it looks, looks like it's metal in this instead of glass because um, she's. Also, black background, but that it's, it, I like the way it's basically glass and light, and I like the way she captures it. What are your thoughts, Mike? I think it's pretty cool. It, it almost reminds me of a snowflake. Um, she's back lit. It's, yeah, I, I agree. It probably is the lid from the broken container. Um, I'm not quite sure how she's got such a great black uh, framing around it, uh, but. Uh, um, a little hard to tell at this resolution how sharp it is, but uh, great idea, Angel. If you if you uh, you know it, it may be it may be something that that we screwed up on on kind of pulling these images for uh, for the uh, for the talk. But if, uh, if for some reason these images aren't coming up better resolution on the Facebook page, please post them again because these are just fantastic. Uh, the only thing I can think of here, um, which is the is the most most smallest of, of recommendations is maybe think about taking this to a square, just something about these these bold circles in a in a square crop uh, really is 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 kind of cool. Oh, yeah, and it may it may help it may not, but um, give it a give it a shot and, and see what it comes out and and it really good it really good seeing uh, seeing some work from you, Angel. It's uh, really good seeing you come in and uh, and show us us what you've uh, what you've been up to. Okay, let's see. Image number twenty-four. Do we have a twenty-four? I don't. I don't think we have a twenty-four. Yeah, there is do we? 24. No, twenty-four. Well, that's the end of the assignment number one, which is the bathroom assignment. Now, um, let's start with Mike. Mike, what's your thoughts on on the assignment uh, as a whole? Uh, you've you've read what Chip wrote, but what are your thoughts on the assignment? What it's supposed to um, supposed to do, and and how people should kind of approach it uh, from a learning standpoint. So oh, I think it's uh, it fairly brought the creativity out of people, um, you know, to, to lock yourself in a confined space and see how many interesting pictures you could come up. Uh, some of the more abstract images really drew my eye. Um, I wish I had had time to, to give this a try. Maybe I'll have time this, this coming week and I can give it a try. Uh, it might be interesting to try it again in a different room, like a kitchen. I like that thought. What are your thoughts on the assignment, Nancy? Uh, well, it's, it's interesting. Something that one of my old teachers, Phil Grout, would do to us when, when we'd be in class. It's like, here, here's where you are. Photograph it. Do, do, do several roles. Do, do like 50 images of right where you are right now. And figure out your images. Work your images. You know, you can work even macro to any long format, but you've got to, you know, work where you are. And I think it's a great way to develop eye and to find ways of seeing things that may not come to you at the first light. And I think a lot of people accomplish that. <clears throat> I absolutely, I absolutely agree. Um, I love, I love the, I love the thought of it because there's, there's way too many times where, you know, you, you see, you see everything in your house day in and day out, and you kind of discount the fact that there's so many cool things to shoot. Um, either macro or not macro or, or, you know, different ways to light things. And, and you can kind of get, uh, you don't get excited on, on shooting some of these things sometimes. So I, I really think that that, that, like both of you said, it really gets people in there, makes you click that button. And then you, then you really start to see. Let's move over to assignment number two. I've got, uh, I've got image number one up on the screen. I'm just going to bounce over to our Facebook page. And I'm going to find the original assignment, and I will read exactly what we told people to uh, to accomplish. Um, this one's called egg, but toilet paper. Take a roll of toilet paper and place it on a white background. Light it from the top, side, back, underneath. 
Share the best photo you've created as a reply below and tell us how you lit it and what you learned about light. Uh, this assignment will give you a better understanding about how a light and shadow works, even with a white-on-white -white scene. Let's start with uh, number one, Mike. So, number one, uh, uh, it's really interesting. You know, you've got a, what is probably an all-white subject, and with the way you curve the paper and the way the, uh, the wrong with the, um, you know, it's very contrasty scene, um, and there's some, you know, the parts that are light, there's a lot of good texture in them. Um, so it's, uh, but you, you know, yeah, you know, it, you, you know, it's toilet paper. It's the most prized commodity right now. <laughs> um, interesting, uh, paper on the, in the, uh, tab in the final. My first thought when I saw this was like glowing embers of a fire. And I don't know if that's something that, that, that Ron kind of thought about. Just that really harsh, like, probably like a little pen light down on the bottom. Maybe even one of those little, this little single LED lights. But I definitely like the, um, I definitely like the contrast on it. Uh, it, it's, it doesn't, doesn't hit you in the face too hard, at least, uh, at least on my screen. And, uh, and I'm just loving the, I'm loving the curves. I'm loving the circle in the middle. I'm loving this little, this little rainbow down here on the bottom, this little, uh, curve down there. And then I, I really think that if, if this, this crumpled up kind of uh, line of, of pages up top right aren't there, I don't think it's as a strong of an image. What do you think, Nancy? Uh, well, I really love the graphic quality of it. I mean, it's like, whoa, white on white, and just mostly black. This is cool. Uh, but it's, it's a really good capture of the graphic line of this. It's all, it's all composition. And it, it's really neat. I do love the way it's lit and the way that light is bringing it in a image or shape as opposed to just a picture of what it. Let's see what Ron says. Uh, Ron says, uh, my toilet paper shot was all iPhone. I lit the photo with a small flashlight and decided to, uh, to tolerate some of the noise as kind of a TP Noir look. Uh, he did fiddle a bit with it in Silver FX Pro and Lightroom and tried to make the shadows crisper and deeper and to push the noise down a bit. Um, but this is as good as he got. The lesson, uh, an iPhone is an iPhone, and not a $3,000 DSLR. Um, all we need is a little Barry White music for this one, I guess, is what he says. Excellent. <laughs> Let's move on to uh, number two. This is a Toilet Paper Egg on White by Mary Lou. And, and I probably put the egg in people's heads because that was a, a photo assignment I always, I always enjoyed was a, a white egg on a white backdrop. Um, so I did, I did explain it as that, but I said, Hey, instead of the egg, let's do a toilet paper. So I, I really like the, uh, the thought that, um, I really like the thought that she, she put into this one. Let me see if she's got a, a description of this. Do I not have a description from you, Mary Lou? Can you, can you go ahead and, and, and chat? Let us know uh, a little bit more about this, but it, it looks like a fish eye, but I'm not exactly sure what the kind of darker petals are on the outside. What do you think, Nancy? I don't know. I'm just jealous that she has that much toilet paper. <laughs> uh, although, um, not a, not a, nope, yes it is. Her image is cool. You're breaking up a little bit there, Nancy. Oh, uh, sorry. It's, um, I don't know. Maybe dead in front of the desk. Uh, uh, I'm just trying to figure out how this is put together. It's, it def definitely it was um, put together um, digitally as opposed to just a plain image. But I'm just I'm, I'm just trying to you know take it apart in my head. So you can you can pass to the next student and <laughs> I'll catch up. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Mike. What are you thinking about this one? Well, this one's eye catching. Almost makes you think of some kind of alien uh, or something. Uh, there's definitely a uh, a toilet paper on white. Um, you know, I, I, I almost think that maybe the, the effect is done in Photoshop, but I'd be curious how how uh, went from the original image to this, or what lens she used, or what setting. But uh, that's it's a, definitely one of the more creative uh, images in this set. Mary Lou says in chat that it was. Uh... Fish eye in Photoshop. I'm guessing she used some sort of a fish eye filter on that. But uh, either way, that's uh, just a fantastic image, Mary Lou. 
move on to number three, egg on glass plate lit from below. Um, doesn't really match the assignment, but hey, we're going to let it go through anyway this time. Uh, this is uh, the Webers again, and um, and they decided that toilet paper was too precious to go photographing and put it in precarious uh, situations, so they decided to uh, to do this here. And even though it, it doesn't, even though it strays away from the white on white theme, um, the just the the reflection of the lights, the filtering of the light from from below, I guess this glass table, and shining on the egg as well as the um, as well as the white uh, shining between uh, between those those marbles is just it's just very eye catching and mesmerizing. Uh, what's your thoughts on that, Nancy? Yeah, it's a, it's a great color image. I mean, you get a lot of color. Of course, it was a white on white assignment, but um, yeah, it's a very striking image. But it's a great image. I like the reflection, the reflectivity of the egg um, below. But um, yeah, it's nice. It's colorful. It's um, really neat. Um, slight. Ref I've been curious as to what that reflection is. All that blue of the face. Very Nice. Interesting. Mike, what are your thoughts on this one? Oh, very creative. Uh, and I don't hold hold it against anyone if I didn't do the white on white because I didn't I didn't pay attention to that either. The um the colors here are really striking. I like the composition. This is this is a much better use of these marbles than the previous and it's ahead of it. Um I love the reflection on black 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 like the glass or, or whatever it is. Um, you know, a tip for uh, anyone doing this kind of shot is you have to constantly uh, uh, wind back your glass to uh, keep all the spots off of it. And even then, you end up photoshopping some of them out. Um, so that's a, a challenge to keep the glass clean. Um, and the camera picks it all up. But really like the, the effect. I don't know if the lighting did that to the big egg or if the big egg had that pattern in it already and the lighting just accentuated it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it looks like crown jewels to me. Wow. I think a little bit of a light skating across the back, a little bit of rim light on the back would might really make this pop. And I'd, I'd like to see you try that, Bob. I think, the, or, or Susan, whoever, which one of you ever shot this? I think that might make this one just pop a little bit better. Let's see, uh, egg on plate with, glass plate with brush. Uh, the Weber's again, number four. Nancy, would you like to start with this one? Um, yeah, it, it's a really, once again, a good capture reflection. Um, nice graphic image with the brush and the, the way those um, brush tines are shadowed onto the egg. Um, kind of, I don't know, it's very center century for me halfway across. It's like, almost like let's flip the image and see what we got. But, um, that's nice. It's a nice, nice, nice use of light and shadow. What are your thoughts, Mike? Um, again, a nice. Uh, this was who takes the, an egg into the bathroom kind of question. So um, this seems like it's a combination of the previous assignment and this one. You've got the egg. You've got the uh, the brush. Created a nice ref, uh, reflection here. That creates a nice geometric pattern. And, and the, the way you lit it, so that the shadow of the bristles uh, uh, races the the egg, and you only have half the egg lit. I mean, that's really the spirit of the assignment: that, uh, is how you light uh, this white object in different ways. Uh, so I think I think this is a, a great image. It's absolutely a great image. I'm almost wondering if if just if if the the reflection doesn't really add too much to it. My thought is maybe if, if you just had the image here, that halfway through and up, um, just to put a little bit more emphasis on kind of that menacing shadow cast on that egg, I wonder if it would make a little bit of a stronger image. But but it's absolutely fantastic, and I love the contrast, and, and would love to even see it in black and white. Let's move on to number five, egg on glass plate lit from below. Mike, you want to start this one? Want to start this one, Mike? Oh yeah, that's that's uh, kind of interesting. Um, I would not have known what it was had they not told us. But the, the pattern and the details in that uh, in that egg, I assume it's glass. The, the crack in it, the, the speck, speckles in it, um, the way it glows. Uh, I think that's 
uh, very creative. Um, looks like it's pretty pretty sharp, uh, maybe sharper at the top than at the bottom. Um, you know, it almost looks like some kind of celestial object or or a radar screen askew or something like that. Oh wow, absolutely! I I definitely agree with that. Um, I asked I asked Susan in uh, in the chat. I don't know if she's she's gotten back to me yet. But I wanted to know if that is uh, if they just really nuked that egg from behind with a light, or if this is something where you can you can usually um, you know kind of blow the insides out and you still are left with the shell. Um, but either way, I think the textures are are just fantastic, just the natural coloring and uh, and that crack across the top top and, and going down is just fantastic. What are your thoughts on this, Nancy? Um, yeah, yeah, it's a great concentrated texture. I love the way that that diagonal that crack comes diagonally across and across. Um, once again, this might look better in a square format than in this this format that it's in. Um, yeah. just kind of hanging there just in this image and there's like a lot of space that's not used, but the photo the egg itself is tremendous. I do like the definition and I'm not really sure how I'm seeing the shadow that I'm seeing on that crack. But it's it's fantastic. I do enjoy this. Let's move to image number six. Oh, another one from the Webbers. Egg on glass plate lit from below LED number two. You want to start with this one, Nancy? Uh, one, it looks like it's the same egg because it's got the same little crack in, in on the side there. If we were looking at the um, from the top. Um, but once again, this is the kind of thing that if you didn't get told what it was, you would have no clue uh, what we've got here. Um, I'm not really sure where my focus is in this. Not as obvious as the other uh, image. It's, once again, a very powerful image in terms of the shadow, the dark, the light side, the dark side, but it's um, not where my focus is. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, this one has dimensions of uh, 959 on the longest side. So, uh, you know, these, these as, you, as you know, Nancy, when we do our, our digital contest, everyone does. Uh, 1024 on the longest side, so I'm not sure if this is just Facebook messing with us, but uh, but yeah, I'd like to see this one uh, uh, in better resolution. What are your thoughts on it, Mike? Uh, again, I think there's you know a lot of depth types over to the right, so a uh, square crop might have been better. Um, it's funny the the edge of the shell seems to be sharp, but when I look at the image itself, it's hard to tell what. What's sharp on it? In the previous image, you could focus on that crack. So you had a, you had a uh, something on the image that drew your eye as, as the focal point here. It's not as obvious. Um, but it does look like a celestial object, and you know, and you got kind of the dark side of the moon and the light side here. But it, it's definitely nuked, <laughs> you know, in a, in a glowing green and red. <laughs> uh, so very creative. Yeah, I almost wonder is it is it red on the left and and a yellow uh, LED on the right because yeah it's absolutely very creative in that and that line going down the middle really makes it for me. Let's go to number seven, elegant toilet paper from Ed Hinky. I don't think Ed uh, described any of his images. So Ed, if you are in the chat, if you want to go ahead and describe a little bit uh, about that uh, to us, that'd be great. And this is absolutely fantastic. This does look like on camera flash. But it shows that uh, that that you know you can you can shoot you know every every light's got a purpose and uh, and it it does its it does its job he he did a nice job of putting those diagonal lines in the in the background sheets and uh, uh, you know if 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 Charmin calls you tomorrow and uh, and says they want you to, to to photograph one of their one of their ad campaigns you definitely know uh, know to put the writing writing in the right spot so. Uh, I definitely like it. I definitely like the the writing kind of going against the diagonals of the background. What are your thoughts on that, Nancy? Oh, it's definitely a glamour shot for uh, for Charmin there. I mean, obviously showing off the spy. But uh, I'm, I'm picking up a bit of pi uh, pixelation in the background, and it could just be my Im right, right, the way I'm getting this image. Um, I like the image. I like the way the lines go across the back. I like the way that the, it, we're working diagonals, diagonals. Um, it's a it's a very good image. I really like this. But once again, I'm picking up a fair amount of pixelation in the background. This one also is, a, is at uh, 960 on the longest side. We 
we've never we've never accepted images through Facebook before, and we figured uh, you know kill two birds with one stone, let people share their images um, Ooh, while we downloaded them, yeah. <laughs> while we downloaded them to to present them. But we might need to uh, if if we we revisit the the assignments again, we might need to say okay, put it on Facebook and then send us a, a copy with the the standard uh, standard sizes. What are your thoughts on this one, Mike? Uh, I see Ed said that he used sunlight uh, as well as uh, the lights and the, and the flash. Anyway, um, so I like the fact that you can read the Sherman, that you can see the detail on the toilet paper. I like the uh, the, uh, you know, the ripples and wrinkles and the cloth that it's putting on. Uh, I don't know whether it was uh, Lightroom or I mean, uh, uh, Facebook or what, but that kind of pixelated some of the background. Uh, if the original image is that way, you could use something like Topaz Demoise uh, and, and clean up a lot of that. Um, but I have a feeling that Facebook may have done something to this uh, when it was uploaded. You have to look at the original image. Uh, but this is definitely in the spirit of the, the competition. It's, it's how do you get that uh, detail and properly expose something and play with the light and shadows of a, of a white subject on a white background. It's definitely... Uh, uh, right in the uh, theme forest. Fantastic. Move to number eight. The Three Toiletiers by our contest chairperson, Louis Sapienza. Uh, you want to go ahead and start with that one, Nancy? Okay. Um, it's a nice image. I would like to have maybe gotten a little tiny, much bit more depth of field because the point of the roll on the left looks like it's coming slightly out of the focus. Um, it's a nice, sharp image. It's a, it's definitely, you know, going with the title of the three toilet tears because they're all in there together. And um, it's a very nice shot. It brings up the texture very well. What are your thoughts on this one, Mike? Um, so I think of all the images that we have in this category, um, this is one of the best examples of getting that detail in the toilet paper where you can actually see the lines and the patterns, uh, the way the lighting is done. Uh, you know, it, uh, I think you did an excellent job uh, kind of bringing those textures that are in the toilet paper to life. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, I respect the artist's decision on how he did this, but I would have maybe liked the, the three points of toilet paper uh, lined up or... Or at a diagonal, you know, one at the top, one at the middle, one a little lower, you know, something like that. Uh, this feels a little haphazard the way it came together, but maybe it was done on purpose. Maybe it was two at the top and one a little lower uh, kind of thing. Would have also been interesting to see if we could have pulled this off with a white background. It might have been a white background, though, um, because... Uh, it might have been. Because I, 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 I did a silhouette. Uh, we'll get to that one pretty soon so he may have uh you know kind of just just pulled the wool over all of our eyes and it, it could have been a white background that he that he photographed these on um i like the idea that the the points are a little haphazard because you know he doesn't take it too seriously he sits there and says hey i'm going to make these points but hey at the end of the day it's just toilet paper so i kind of like i don't know if i'd like them if they were lined up i'm not really sure but it's definitely good raking light it shows the texture just absolutely perfect uh, good job lewis let's see if lewis wrote anything on this image here, I don't think I see anything from Lewis. Lewis, if you're uh, if you're in the chat, tell everybody uh, a little bit more about this, if you don't mind. Oh, he's there. He's there. Is he? Yeah. Full of paper had a mind of its own. Just kept moving. Uh, he says the background was black. Uh, he shot in the light box, lit from the top, and lit from the left. Excellent. Good job, Lewis. Let's move on to number nine. Name that brand by Michelle Barkdahl. Mike, do you want to start with this one? Sure. This is another good example of. Did you say Mike, right? Yes, sir. All right. This is another good example of, of doing the white on white, and, it's, and you can really see the, the texture or the pattern in the uh, uh, toilet paper. Um, the uh, depth of field's good. The background, you know, you've got a sharp foreground and a and it fades away quickly on the, on the background. Um, I like the, the composition. It's not centered or anything like that. Um, 
I absolutely agree. Uh, my thought is, I, I, I love the I love the framing treatment to, that she gave it, and I'm liking the tonality. But I, it almost seems like the um, it's toilet paper. It's it's meant to be soft. So something in my mind just doesn't jive because I see that that kind of extra sharpness over there on the left roll. So I I'd like to see that maybe with a little bit of uh, you know you probably shot it like that, and that that's probably how it came out. But just a little bit of blur on that might have softened it up. And, and might make a stronger image. I'm not really sure. What are your thoughts on that, Nancy? I don't know. I like it the way it is. I, I love the way that um, the light is showing the texture and the shadows are filling in there. I, you know, I'm good with that. I love the way that that's coming in. I love, you know, the right, one on the right is starting to come out of the depth of field and you know, coming a little bit more soft as it comes toward you. But I, I really like the way the light is showing the texture. Michelle writes, I titled this one, Name That Brand. Unrolled and layered PP is the base and the backdrop. Oh, I didn't even notice that. I didn't even notice that she used toilet paper as the backdrop. Uh, she lit with a ring light, post pot processed, uh, flipped to black and white, and used Silver FX Pro with fine art setting to make it look aged. Do we know what? Do we know what brand that is? Chat, do you know what the brand of that is? Because <laughs> I don't know. I have no clue. Janet says it looks uh, it looks cushy to her. We'll see if the chat can figure out what uh, what brand that is. If not, then we'll have to get Michelle to, to give us a give us a hint. Let's go over to image number ten, and this is Mike Thomas's break in case of emergency. Mike, tell us more about this image. Well, this this is where I was paying attention to the white on white of the assignment, and uh, you know the spirit of uh, of our current crisis and, and the fact that they were selling uh, rolls of toilet paper a giant one roll. Uh, at thirty dollar, uh, two rolls max per customer, uh, it kind of got my attention, and so I thought, uh, you know, uh, the traditional break glass for in case of emergency for a cigarette or some any number of other things. So I was trying to get the toilet paper in the glass and, and light it and, uh, and convey that uh, that humor of uh, of the current situation. I absolutely love it. What is the background on that one, Mike? Uh, so I have a, uh, it's a, it's a backdrop that's hanging on my wall, um, and a painted backdrop. Fantastic. I, I love, I love the angle of the hammer. Um, the, the head of the hammer kind of, at least on my screen, um, and, and it's kind of interesting on my, my main display, which, uh, I've been, I've been bad. I haven't, I haven't calibrated, uh, I need to calibrate it again, but looking on the stream, I can actually see more detail there where, where here on my screen, the, the head, the shadows of the head kind of disappear. But now that I'm looking at it on the stream view, um, yeah, I, I love that. I just, I just absolutely love that. What are you thinking on that, Nancy? Um, actually, um, I really do like the, yeah, the, yeah, the stream and the, uh, what I'm getting on the feet are two different things. Um, yeah, I really, really like this. I love the compositional lines you've got in here. Um, you know, you remember not to put the star dead center in your photo. I'm, I, I really like this. I love that the white of the toilet paper comes out this, like this, the overwhelming sheet you have the whole shot. It, it's really nice. Well thought out. Let's move to image number 11, Toilet Paper Eggs, Elaine Hamley. Now, Nancy, you want to start with this one? Well, uh, yes. Um, how can one argue with this? This is an <laughs> image of our times, apparently. Um, uh, I think the focus is a little bit soft in here. Uh, I've got a fair amount of grain popping up. Um, it's cute. It's funny. It's amusing. Um, great photography. Maybe not, but I think it's a tr truly a sign of our times. How about you, Mike? Uh, this is really humorous. I would have never... Uh, uh, to put this together like this. Um, it's amazing how we can create faces out of uh, things that are passing. Um, the exposure looks okay. The focus is on the, seems to be on the uh, the cardboard tube, uh, but the depth of field is good enough that you can get away with it. Actually, when I look closer, I can see the, the threads in the hat as well, so I think they did a good job on, on the focus and depth of field. 
Yeah, I see the I see the tubes as well. The the tubes of the toilet paper rolls they they look a little soft, but then I look at the I look at the tube on the front. I look at the hat. So it's it's again it may be Facebook uh, Facebook playing playing around with us. But uh, even fake eyes, make sure you focus on the fake eyes. And and how can you how can you shoot this and and not have a big smile on your face and and everybody you share. Elaine, I hope you shared this on your wall. Uh, I'm sure everybody that saw it probably probably cracked up laughing about it. Let's see what Elaine says about uh, about this toilet paper eggs. I think Elaine may have another image because this this uh, explanation doesn't doesn't follow us. Let's see if she's got another image in here. And she does. Number twelve orphans on my doorstep. And is this? Oh nope, I don't have I don't have a description for this one here. But let's go ahead and start this start this off. I'll start it. Um, it 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 doesn't meet the uh, the assignment, but it's it's absolutely cute anyway. And uh, my only nitpick would be the uh, again, if even fake eyes deserve to be in focus, so uh, stop down your your aperture a little bit more and increase that depth of field and get that that last toilet paper's uh, toilet paper's eyes in focus there. What are your thoughts on this one, Nancy? Um, I, I'm kind of the same way. One thing, we're really dead centered on this. I mean, bam, right in the, right in the middle. But I would love to have had a, all the toilet paper and the basket in focus. I, mine with the tree being kind of fuzzy. Um, and it's obviously sitting on a white chair. Um, but it's um, yeah, it's cute. It's a, it's an imaginative shot. It's, they're funny. And if you leave those out too long, somebody's going to steal them. What are your thoughts on this one, Mike? It's creative and it's and it's cute. Um, the uh, I think it would have been interesting to see it in, in a different setting, um, but it's it's almost like uh, uh, someone left a gift on your on your doorstep, uh, that kind of thing. So that's uh, that's pretty creative. Okay, let's move on to image number thirteen of Elaine. And this one's called Egg Poop. And she does write about this one. The subjects were arranged on white tea towels. The light was from a south-facing window mid-afternoon. And I forgot the flashlight shining down on the upper left. The aspects I like the most about this photo are the shadows, the toilet paper, and egg cast. Uh, and the detail on the paper of the roll, I call this Egg Poop. Let's uh, go with Nancy. What do you think about this one? I, I like this. this. This is the assignment. This is a well shot example of the assignment. Is the assignment, not excitement. Ah. That she's pulling in off of those tea towels as well, you know, as the obviously printed paper, the toilet paper, the you know texture there. But man, those yeah, the tea towels, the textures coming in. You can see the texture of the egg. Um, and I like her composition. I like the fact that we've got that lovely shadow coming down the right side, and the highlights up on the you know stood toward the top left. I you know nice. I'm I'm very pleased with this. What are your thoughts on this one, Mike? Well, this is a perfect uh, 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 photo for the theme, uh, playing with the light and, and shadow of white on white. And, and again, really good job getting the textures on the uh, toilet paper. And it's it's kind of interesting how uh, how some of the images that were uploaded uh, uh, were fared much poorer than others of like Facebook. But you can see a little bit of that pixelation down at the bottom, so even this one took a hit from Facebook, I think. But the, the the shadows on the edge, the shadows on the toilet paper, and even even the title. I would never have thought of that. That's that's so creative. Absolutely, it's it's it's. I, I I can't add anything else to it. Uh, and this this image is 960 on the longest side as well. Um, I'm seeing a little bit of color, maybe some color noise. Uh, maybe a thought would be is to maybe I would take it black and white. I would take all the saturation out and and tint it. Maybe a little bit of a an ivory or a cream color. But uh, just on the on the right side of the the roll and the shadows, I see a little bit of uh, that color noise, which again could be definitely Facebook. Um, doing doing Facebook things. Good job. Number fourteen, White Angel Soft by Jackie Colstock. 
Let's see what Jackie says. Jackie says, White Angel Soft on a white fleece blanket with a crystal lens ball. F25, 125th of a second at ISO 6400. Uh, it was lit from the right side with a studio light. The crystal was lit with an LED flashlight inside the roll. And lifted three quarters of an inch up and some minor post-processing work. What are your thoughts on this one, Mike? Uh, so another good creative image, uh, definitely in, in the spirit of the uh, challenge. Um, I like the the focus, I like the detail in the in the toilet paper. I like the interesting shadow that's projected here. Um, the thing that draws my eye is a really bright spot on the top of the image falls. So I assume it's reflecting some kind of light source. Um, in this particular case, I think it would have uh, probably uh, benefited from a, uh, a different background or a, a either a more wrinkled background or or a, a smoother background. Uh, uh, it's a little um, distracting, the wrinkles in the background. Um, I had the same problem with one of my photos, and I couldn't couldn't quite get the background smooth, and, and uh, it was frustrating to me. So maybe I'm just taking that out on this image. It, the toilet paper looks a little yellow to me in the image, so I'm not sure about the color balance on the. Interesting. Uh, backgrounds see, seem to be kind of like rotation. It's either you either have to have it, the rotation perfect, or so far that it looks like you you didn't miss you know lining up a horizon or a vertical. Same thing with the backdrop. It's either, it's either got to be perfect or it's got to be just completely messy, and this one kind of falls in the middle. So I definitely agree with you there. I, I love the time that, that Jackie took to kind of fan that toilet paper in the front. Uh, if, it was just a, if it was just a regular roll, I think it wouldn't, it wouldn't have as much of an impact. What are your thoughts on this, Nancy? Um, I think this would be really powerful shot black and white. Uh, the blue, the blueness of that, um, LED light coming out of the crystal and, you know, it's making the toilet paper kind of look yellow. If shot, shoot this in black and white and all that goes away. You just have light and dark. Um, I love the texture of the toilet paper. I love the way it's sitting there. I'm not so thrilled about the three, the shat, the, the large chunk of shadow to the left. It's, it's almost like that's commanding more than the toilet paper. It's like, what, you know, are we foreshadowing something here? Is this an illustration for a book title and something is going to attack the toilet paper? But um, I, I would shoot this in black and white, and I think you'd come up with a, something a little bit more um, less distractible, less distracting with the color. Hmm. Okay. Let's go on to image number 15 on a pedestal by Mike Thomas. And oh, I've, wait, got, I've got description wait. for you, Mike, but okay. just go ahead and tell us about it. Oh, um, so I sort of take plates and uh, try to uh, elevate the toilet paper to put it on a pedestal. Again, kind of commentary on the time. Uh, white tablecloth, white background. Um, I discovered that my uh, cake plate isn't level, nor is it centered when I did this, and I created a lot of challenges trying to fix it in, in, uh, uh, in Photoshop, and I did not succeed. So this was this is my favorite image of the set. Um, I think the white vignette on the outside is is well done and really helps pull you in. Um, it's it's a one of those vignettes where unless you kind of specifically investigate why the edges are are whiter, you, you don't really realize. Which is good vignette in my opinion. And I see your background. As you said, you were kind of suffering with the same thing with backdrops, trying to get those those darn things wrinkle free. Um, but I could totally see, you know, especially with, with the times nowadays, I could totally see. You know, back back when I was younger, and I'm sure everybody remembers uh, the whole gray Poupon commercials. And uh, I could I could totally see something uh, replacing that with a, a fancy roll of toilet paper. What do you think about that, Nancy? Um, I'm just I'm just trying to adjust my screen down because I'm kind of getting uh, washed out in the middle of the roll of toilet paper, and I'm not seeing that on the image that's on my phone. So I'm trying to <laughs> justify two images because I'm I've got contrasting information here because mm -hmm. um, right now I'm washing out in the middle of that, but I don't think the image is. It's just what no. I'm looking at is. Um, it's a nice image. The vignetting really makes this into a nice piece. It reflects the circular images of both the, the plate and the toilet paper. And um, it's a nice, well-thought-out shot. And the, the wrinkles in the backdrop don't bother me. It looks almost like a plastered wall. Hmm. 
Fantastic. Let's go to number 16, Luxury by Mike Thomas. Mike, go ahead and tell us about this one. Hey, I can afford three rolls of toilet paper, so uh, <laughs> I thought I'd show off. Um, there's, again, things are more interesting in, in threes, so I, I put three out, uh, uh, same, same backdrop I used before, uh, and then tried to get it, uh, uh, have a little diagonal with how I level the toilet paper, but, um, you know, I, I did not get the detail in the toilet paper I would have liked to have seen, like, like uh, Lewis did in this photo and some of the other photos that we've seen. Um, so I've actually reshot this trying to do better. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, uh, what are your thoughts on this, Nancy? Um, once again, it's the the three rolls of toilet paper idea. I like the way that you have um, gauged the um, ends of the paper so that it gives you a, a diagonal line going through. Um, it's not just you know all straight and all in one place. Um, for me, the image is. Um, I'm trying to work between. Yeah, I'm. I'm kept losing focus on the ends of the rolls there, and it looks. And it, it may just be the way that I am seeing this right now. It may you know now that I tilt that that. That's looking better. I it, yeah, it's a nice image. I like what you've done there, and I you know you've caught your focus well. Nice stuff. All right, I can't add anything to it. I love the diagonals. I love the steps, but. One thing I really like is I like that, that the, the bar these are on just, just bows ever so slightly. I think that really gives it some, uh, some impressive character. Let's go to number 17, Toilet Paper by Christine Milliker. Let's see if Christine has anything she wrote on here. White on white, white toilet paper on white with overhead lighting. Um, how about I get started on that one? Um, I'm seeing, I don't know if this is Facebook or not, but I'm seeing focus kind of, kind of in the middle here, kind of maybe on the 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 top of that right right roll, and this edge on this left roll that's closest to the camera to me is out of focus, and that really that really pulls me out of uh, out of the fairy tale. Um, also, I'm seeing those um, I'm seeing those those highlights from your ring flash that Mike pointed out. Um, on uh, on assignment number one, so uh, I'm not really sure how you could have how you could have changed that up. Uh, either either soften those soften those flashes a little bit, um, go down in the studio and and bring up bring up some some bigger lights and just make your uh, uh, make your light source bigger and uh, and and trying to go from there. Um, I'm also kind of I'm also kind of pulled out by the just the absolute darkness of the cardboard tubes. I'm not sure if she darkened those. But um, usually, I'm, I was playing with a roll of toilet paper myself. I'm looking at it now. Yeah, our toilet paper is not that dark, so that kind of pulls me out of it a little bit as well. And I, I find that 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 extra dark contrast kind of, again, kind of pulls me out of it. What do you think, Nancy? Well, I like the way that she's put the rolls in a sink, which is why we're getting the high reflectivity off the off the container because it's it's a sink. But I really like the way she's um, arranged her rolls. Uh, where I'm pulling the best focus is is all the way to the left on the um, out outer side of that top roll on the you know towards the um, edge there. There's really sweet focus there. And there's sweet focus like toward, like you said toward the center. So I would have just given a little bit more depth of field, and I think we would have had a lot more going on. And but once again, the lights are distracting. I will give you that. It's I do love the way that two two shadows overlap in between the two. Oh yeah, I see it. What are yeah, your thoughts? Nice geometric. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on this, Mike? Um, the composition's okay. Um, looks like I'm not quite sure what it's in or on. Um, you already mentioned the, the highlights from the light. I think the thing that I would have liked to have been able to see is you can see it a little bit on the left wall. You can you should be able to see a texture from all the lines of toilet paper wrapped around the tube. You see it a little bit on the left roll, but it is there is no detail whatsoever on the right roll. It's just a white circle, like an icing on a donut or something. Um, so I feel like we, we lost some detail that would have been interesting there. Um, and it's interesting how much of a contrast change there is from the white to the 
full of paper roll. Um, but, that, but that's the whole purpose behind this assignment is to play with white on white and the textures and the shadows. And so I think it's a good effort. Right. Yeah. Let's move to image uh, number 18. Yikes by Chuck Gallegos. Nancy, you want to start with this one? Um, I really like like this one. This is basically you take a towel and use it as a background. Um, possibly a bathroom rug, but I'm betting it's a towel because it's really clean. Um, I love the way the textures contrast between the paper and the background. Um, the lighting is really picking up the texture of the paper well. Um, the way the uh, stripes level in and out without using too, getting it too dark and making it look like a gray thing, it's still showing the texture and oh, I, this, is, this is nice. I like the lines in this. What are your thoughts, Mike? Uh, so this one, to me, has got a lot of things to like. Um, there's detail in the toilet paper, detail in the, the backdrop, the, the carpet, whatever it's on. I like the twist in the toilet paper. I like the, the diagonal in the image going from, from the bottom left up to the right. Uh, it's not a full roll of toilet paper. Um, you know, so I think the, the exposure and everything has done really well here and the composition's really well. Uh, definitely, uh, a, a great exemplar for the white on white challenge. I agree. I love, I love the twists and I love the, how the twists and the, the lines in the toilet paper really just kind of play off each other. It's, it's, it's fantastic. I, I couldn't imagine for a better shot. Uh, maybe, maybe including a little bit more on, of the shadow, not cutting the shadow off on the right. Um, assuming that doesn't go that far uh, off the frame, but uh, but beyond that, that is the the smallest of nitpicks. So good job, Chuck. Number nineteen, Panic by Janet Janet Payton. Nancy, you want to start with that one? Ah, so who has the Mr. Potato Head? Um, hmm. <laughs> um, it's it's a very humorous shot. Um, I like the use of the shelf liner or. Is that a, a non-slip bathroom mat in the back? But it's you know all of the all along the bathroom theme. Um, but it's it's cute. It, it tells this little story of like oh my what is happening? It is a crisis. Um, nice shot and um, nicely lit. What's your thought on that one, Mike? I agree. The um, first of all, it's very creative and cute. Um, and the uh, I love. I mean, the, there's detail. Um, the lighting's done well, so there's detail throughout the image. You can see the lines on the toilet paper. Um, you know, nothing seems to be blown out or anything. Um, the only thing that I find distracting are the little circles. In the, mm -hmm. I guess they're on the backdrop from the left and the right. But uh, other than that, I mean, the image is, is uh, really humorous and a good, uh, good exemplar for this, for this challenge. I agree about those circles. I was wondering what those were. Um, Janet, definitely try to redo this if you can, and maybe uh, maybe get a, a white towel or or a piece of white um, like poster board or something. I think that would really make it pop. And and absolutely, the exposure on this is is just perfect. Uh, you know, one one third of a stop or the, the smallest amount higher, uh, and you're and you've lost all that detail. So really good job on keeping that detail in there. Um, I also uh, let's go back to Chuck's image number number eighteen because he actually has a, a description on this. He writes uh, he wanted to capture some of the panic of running low under the present circumstances. He lit it with an octagonal uh, octagonal reflective umbrella, full power, forty five degree left, and a soft box, twelve by twenty four at forty five degree right, quarter power placed on a white towel to contrast textures. He learned that the quarter power was needed on one side to bring out those textures. Perfect. Now let's go forward. Uh, we'll go up to 20. Julie Bennett, Stripes. Mike, you want to start with this one? So, the, I wish this were a little brighter, and I wish the, uh, it was a little lighter. It's kind of yellow, um, at least on my screen. It's it, uh, I love, the, it looks like they're using, using the same brand of toilet paper that Chuck's using. Uh, and it, sh and it shares a lot of the same characteristics with a, a diagonal going from the bottom left up to the right. Um, the waves of, 
of toilet paper and see the lines in the, in the pattern. I mean, you even see the lines of the toilet paper wrapped around the shoe. Um, like, I think this is a really good effort and, and with a couple of minor tweaks in Lightroom on the exposure and, and the white balance. And I think you'd have a great, a great image uh, uh, here. Now, I'm not sure if it's Facebook or, or not, but it almost looks like it's it's a high ISO image. It almost seems like it's uh, you've got that color noise in it, maybe a little bit grainy as well. But my thought is um, maybe try to resolve that light a little bit more. And that, that texture in that toilet paper, you know, that's screaming just light me from the side. Um, so, uh, Julie, I hope you, I hope you try, try playing around a little bit more with that and, and just light it from the side and, and just play with those shadows and, and see what you get. But I love, just like Mike said, I love the, 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 the dance of the, of the toilet paper from the left to the right and think that really, that really helps out. What do you think, Nancy? Yeah, I think there was a lot of effort put in, in, into building this shot, and then it, it fell through on the lighting. Um, it's too monochrome for me in terms of, you know, I don't have a pop of really bright light anywhere. Um, and that sounds goofy right now, but, um, you know, I'm not seeing the contrast I'd like. Gotcha. Julie writes, uh, stripes. I found that the placement of the light not only changes the shadows, but the highlights as well. This may also be a result of the distance the light is from the TP. I did not measure when I move, uh, I did not measure when I moved the light from one direction to another. Uh, it's a lot of, a lot of potential, Julie. Your, your composition is, is fantastic, but, uh, play more around with that light with, with those, uh, fantastic textures. 21, White TP by Richard Stolarski. Nancy, would you like to start with this one? Yeah, well, again, I'm getting a small image with a lot of pixelation coming yeah, up. So I think Facebook has not done him any favors. Um, <clears throat> I think it fulfills the technical question. It's white on white. There's light. There's shadow. There's highlight. But um, I think he could have done more with this. Um yeah, we've seen what other people have done with arranging their toilet paper and this. It's just like, we put it there, we took a picture of it. It's very journalistic. But um, I, th I think you could do a lot more to develop your shadows, particularly in the left side with, um, you know, moving the paper. What are your thoughts on this one, Mike? Uh, it seems a little static. Um, and maybe I wouldn't have thought that if I hadn't have seen Chuck and, and the other, some of the other photos. But... Uh, you know, uh, I think uh, I think more playing with the, the subject and the lights uh, would have benefited this. Um, and it's hard to tell from my image uh, how sharp it is. And, you know, it doesn't look like there's a lot of detail. I see a little detail in the in the right side of the toilet paper. Um, I think I think that. Uh, a little more playing and a little more uh, experimentation with exposure and lights would have been a total. Right. Uh, this one has a, a maximum size, uh, the longest side of 640. So uh, so definitely I'm going to give uh, Richard the benefit of the doubt and, and say that this is likely a nice sharp focus. Um, I see some blocky details down here. I'm not sure if that's in focus. Uh, if, if this is in focus and that's in focus, I think he's well on his way. I think he's got a nice composition here, even though it is. it looks like you know, it looks like a roll of toilet paper fell on the floor, but hey, that's you know that could be the natural order of things, how it how it unraveled. And I I really like the idea that there's so much room at the top, and and he left just that maybe a little bit less room. But I don't know if uh, uh, if Richard uh, meant to do that, but I really like the fact that the shadows all all in that frame, and uh, it kind of almost mirrors that top distance from from the frame as well. I I really like this, but but yeah, I think. Uh, Compositionally, and and even your even your posing on that, uh, I I like it. I just think uh, maybe a little bit different lighting would uh, would make it pop. Go to twenty two, uh, TP by Angel Kidwell. Let's see what Angel has to say. Did she write anything down for? No, Angel only wrote well wrote for one. So let's uh, let's take a look at that uh, again. This is a. Uh, Man, 225 on the longest side for Angel. Um, I'm definitely going to give her the benefit of the doubt that I'm pretty sure this is likely sharp. The uh, the roll up top is likely sharp. And I'll tell you what, I really love the uh, the half circle. I love the half moon up top. 
And I love the triangles in this. I think it I think it really works. And I love the depth of field for whatever that shadow is on the bottom. What uh, what do you think about that, Nancy? It's a it's a great um, graphic composition. Um, I'm not pulling enough detail to really tear it all apart because um, I'm getting a lot of pixelation. I, Facebook has not been her friend on this, but I do. She definitely has focus on that front triangle, but trunk, focus on the roll. But I love the way she's played with the light and the shadow there. Very nice. What are your thoughts, Mike? Uh, I like the graphic composition here. The uh, uh, the uh, curves and the lines and the triangles um, and the different uh, uh, depth of field on the different uh, parts of the toilet paper and stuff. I wish I had a, a bigger image to look at, but uh, I think this one has potential. There's a lot of potential. Angel, once again, just just double check your. Actually, can somebody in the chat maybe go go back and take a look at angels? Are are they this size uh, on Facebook, or did we, or did we just pull them down kind of kind of small? I'd like to find out. But if they are if they are kind of small on Facebook, Angel, please uh, please reupload these because these are these are fantastic. Number twenty three, last roll by John Milliker. Um, this is what I always think about when I, I, I think about the assignment, the, the white on white, because uh, everybody usually goes white on white. And, uh, and a lot of people don't really realize that just because it's a white object doesn't mean it can't be completely black. And, and this was shot uh, in, front of a, in front of a light box. And, man, even, even the quality on that's terrible. Let me take a look. Ooh, 209 on mine. I know I didn't. Done. I know I didn't uh, upload it that that uh, that size. So uh, so however we pulled these images down, man, that sucker is uh, that sucker is soft. But yeah. um, but basically, I, uh, I I brought it in. I just goosed the uh, the highlights in the in the shadows a little bit, and uh, you know you can you can light white white black and you can light black white and uh, and this was just the proof of that. Ideally, uh, you've got a a, a perfect um, the the dots between the the sheets of the toilet paper hanging down uh, the the image that I uploaded was was absolutely crisp and sharp. So uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's a it's a shame that it really pulls it down. Uh, it pulls the quality down like this. What are your thoughts on that, Nancy? Yeah, I, I yeah on the computer I cannot even see that line. I can see it on the phone where the light was coming through the um, holes the the perforations. So and uh, yeah, that that looks good. Um, I really like the what you did with this, the way you thought outside the box with with the with the pieces of the challenge. Um, it, it's a nice image, and yes, I can tell that you've got more in there than I'm seeing right now on this big screen. Hmm. How about you, Mike? Any thoughts on this one? Oh, it definitely stands out as different than all the other uh, takes on this uh, assignment. Uh, you know, with. Uh, uh, it's a good lesson that uh, when you backlight something, even a white object, it's going to be much darker. You can control how dark it is. Um, and, uh, you know, by the same token, I think some of the folks hopefully learned that even a white background, you can change the lighting to make it dark or gray. Or, you know, so there's a lot of control you have over the background and, and the foreground subject. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's very graphic. It's almost like a rush octave because it's they're small, <laughs> uh, but uh, definitely uh, creative. The number number twenty four. Do we have a twenty four? There is no twenty four. No twenty four. We are done here. So, what are you guys' thoughts on this uh, on this assignment? I think uh, I think Nancy did. Nancy, did you go first on the bathroom assignment? Um, I don't remember. Well, let's have you start. Let's have you th tell tell us what your thought is on 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 the the white on white assignment and uh, and what students get out of it when they when they practice it. Well, I th I think that there are a lot of different ways of looking at it, uh, all the way from the you know white versus what white versus non white. What is what is here? What is there? Uh, there was a there, there's a great way to explore texture when you're shooting white on white. Because you can get uh, shadows, you can get texture, you can show all the pieces off. Um, so I think that was a great way to um, expand their texture repertoire. Fantastic. What are your thoughts, Mike? So for those, everyone that follows instructions on white on white, I think it's a great lesson in, uh, in shadows and lighting. Um, 
you know, I, I missed that in the beginning and, and had to adjust mid course. Uh, but they, you know, there, there are a couple of really nice images in there that, that show that some people really, you know, learned something or got it. And, uh, I th- hope everyone else kind of gets the, the spirit of it. Might, might be an interesting tabletop night that we're ever allowed to meet in person again. Oh, absolutely. But yeah, if you if you submitted to this, uh, and if, if you didn't submit anything, I hope you I hope you go back and, and e- at least on your own time, uh, try to do these these examples, try to do these assignments, and uh, and put them up on our Facebook, and, and our members will still kind of give you feedback and critique on it. But if you didn't if you didn't do the assignment properly with with white on white, go back and revisit it because there's a reason we we picked this assignment um, for that. Let's move over to assignment our last assignment, assignment number three which is going to be our uh, self-portrait. And this is actually inspired by Mike. And um, the difficulty level was you've got to take it yourself, no help. And uh, you're supposed to let us know, uh, you know what you kind of learned, what you kind of learned on uh, setting your camera, setting your focus, and, uh, and, and going, uh, going about through that. So let's get started with, uh, with Ron Pfeiffer. Do I have a description for Ron? I do. Um, let's see, uh, self-portrait. My self-portrait was done as a Photoshop exercise. I want to do as much of the three submissions with an iPhone to see if the images would hold up. I started with a single iPhone selfie of, uh, my upper left, my left upper quadrant on my face and duplicated that portion to four tiles. I assembled and blended it to, to look like one double face. I then use a non-photo image of sunset clouds to create a layer that I s- simply wiped away carefully to reveal select parts of the portrait. I then put a duplicate cloud layer on top of that image and carefully wiped away the parts of the image to help blend me into the clouds. And then he rotated the image left and cropped it. What are your thoughts on this one, Mike? Um, well, very, very abstract. I, I don't know how much I would consider it a soft portrait because I wouldn't recognize that that was, that was wrong. Um, and I almost feel like it would have been interesting to have the the face uh, vertical instead of horizontal there. But, um, uh, definitely uh, uh, appears that Ron has spent too much time in quarantine. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> Absolutely. I think I, I agree with you there. Um, maybe maybe turning the face up, up a little bit. But I, I like the fact that he was brave enough to kind of go against the norm. Because we're not, you know, we're not used to seeing faces like this. It's it's definitely very foreign to us. It's it's definitely unsettling. Um, it's 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 certainly an interesting uh, an interesting technique. And uh, other than than maybe maybe rotating it ninety degrees, uh, yeah, I'm I'm not really sure what else to say about this. Uh, it, everything looks sharp, which is definitely difficult when uh, when taking your self portrait, which was the uh, which was the spirit of the competition was uh, get yourself a self portrait, uh, do it, learn how to do it right, and he definitely he definitely created uh, created that and definitely achieved that, and then took it one step further by uh, by adding a, a very interesting effect. What's your thoughts on this, Nancy? Um, yeah, it's a, it's an incredibly interesting um, use of Photoshop it's used to develop an image and make it and think. I'm not getting, you know, in terms of the um, Self-portrait that part of it, yeah, that this is one way of constructing an image of it. I don't know that it's really in the idea of you know, taking a self, you know, a self-portrait and not getting help with it because you're actually the computer's helping you along in this. Uh, but it, it, it is an intriguing image. I do like the idea um, that they've mentioned of going, you know, going it in portrait format. What a concept with a face being in portrait, but I think that would help it, you know, hit the eyes looking at someone. Right now, it's very disorienting because the eyes are going sideways. You know, bring it up so that you've got somebody looking at you, you know, both ways, and I think it would be a, a, much, a more intriguing photo. Okay. Move to image number two. Mary Lou Burleson, before the cut. Let's see if Mary Lou says anything on my cheat sheet here. I don't think I have anything from Mary Lou, do I? I do not. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about this. I'm not sure if that uh, if that modeling is uh, knowing Mary Lou. Uh, she she likes uh, she likes her artistic filters a little bit, and uh, I'm guessing that that's what this is. Probably a cell phone shot with a with an artistic filter, and it's uh, you know it's perfect. It it really it really makes us 
think about how we feel during everything that's going on. You know, we can't we can't go out except for certain certain instances. And uh, for most of us, we've been home longer than we've been uh, in a long, long time. So I I think her her expression captures it. It's a perfect self portrait of uh, the time in her life right now. And uh, I think a lot of us can relate to it. What do you think, Nancy? I'm kind of with what, what you said. I mean, it's the the image of, um, as a documentation of where we are in time, it's perfect. Um, the Yeah, the texture thing throws me off a bit, but, um, you know, it's where she is, and it, you know, it is a true capture of that. What are your thoughts on that, Mike? I think it's, uh, well, other than the fact that it's kind of raining and, and the low resolution. Um, the picture of, of Mary Lou, the expression on her face, the eyes, the hair flying, I think that's uh, a, a great uh, image. Uh, I just wish it wasn't so, so grainy. Yeah, I, I likely uh, 570 on the long side. Likely uh, she had a nice, a nice photo filter on that. Which photos? Which Facebook just destroyed? So we're we'll definitely um, we had a we had a good uh, a good turnout. We want everybody to let us know what they thought about the uh, the the assignment and doing it live. And uh, if we do it again, we'll we'll fix it again. Now this number three is uh, this handsome gentleman Ed, um, and that's uh, nine sixty on the longest side. But man, he he really nails the focus on this. And uh, yeah, let's that's, see what that's nice. Let's see what Ed's does. Ed say anything? I don't think Ed had any comments for us, but you know, um, if you ever get a chance to come to come to one of our meetings, Nancy, Ed is just a fantastic gentleman. He's a great photographer and he's just got a heart of gold. And I tell you what, this is a heck of a good shot of Ed. Um, yeah, I'm liking the soft nice. lighting. I'm liking the backdrop. I'm liking the, uh, it's, it's kind of, kind of passporty style. Not that that's a bad thing. Um, and I'm missing a little bit of catch lights in your in your eyes, Ed. I think uh, even if you even if you got to cheat a little bit, um, you put some catch lights in your eyes. Man, you got a you got a million dollar portrait there. What do you think, Nancy? I, I think it's a lovely. You know, in terms of a portrait, it is a lovely portrait. It is well shot. It is well exposed. I mean, and it, it's well focused. The focus is where I want it to be. And um, you know, it's really he's got really good color. I mean, on his skin, it looks. It's a really nice. It's just really well done. What are your thoughts on this one, Mike? Uh, I think it's a uh, great headshot. Uh, perfect for uh, business cards, web pages, uh, uh, exhibits. Uh, yeah, I would have charged money to someone to make a headshot like this. Um, so I did a really good self portrait here. Uh, hopefully, the original image. Uh, uh, hopefully the, the the graininess I see is, is a Facebook artifact, uh, but everything looks sharp and and boy he dresses up nice. That is a heck of a nice looking tie. I'm jealous. <laughs> Good job, Ed. Let's move to number four. Self portrait by Elaine Hambly. Nancy, would you like to start with this one? Um. Once again, I'm not sure if it's the Facebook part of it, but I'm getting grain everywhere in this. Um, it's an interesting viewpoint of looking at the back of yourself instead of the front of yourself. You know, um, maybe you don't want to be seen at this point in your life. I mean, you don't want to um, face the, what the world is right now. So, you know, you got to go in the back of your head. You're all thinking about it. Uh, Elaine, if you're in the uh, if you're in the chat. I think I think you are. Uh, what is your thought on this? I don't have anything anything on on my my cheat sheet here about your. Yes, she's there. Which what's your thoughts on this? Why why did you choose? Is there is this signifying anything? Uh, tell us in the chat, Mike. What are your thoughts on this one? Uh, so it's interesting. It's like you've got three shots of her her head. You see a little hair at the bottom. You see the back of her hair. You see it again on the uh, camera and the cell phone. Um, I see lots of photos like this uh, since I have girl, a girl in the house and they're always doing their hair. You see a lot of photos like this from uh, some of our club, other club members that do braiding and things. Um, but I, I have a feeling that maybe Elaine was a little camera shy, so she didn't want to do a, a, a shot that showed her face. Um, but uh, and, and that this, this looks the graininess in this one is definitely probably. 
or in part due to an iPhone account, uh, adjusting for the light in the room. Right. It almost looks yeah, like I'm, the... Go ahead, Nancy. I, I'm looking at this actually on my phone now. And actually, it's a nice, clean shot on my phone in terms of a, two, a you know a two inch by two inch image. It's when you take it bigger that it gets develops its flaws. Interesting. It looks uh, like also it looks like the the focus is on is on the hair like is on the the copy of her head all the way on the bottom. Yeah. It, um. Which which kind of kind of bugs me a little bit. Um, I would like to see, uh, and, and hey, this is tough. This is, you ever see those old Western cowboy movies where they, they shoot behind their back, uh, through a mirror? Uh, this is like that. This is a tough shot. But if, if she were to get, uh, the focus there on her head and come up with a heck of a, uh, a, a deep and artistic, uh, reason for, for this, uh, man, I'll tell you what, this would be a heck of a shot. Good job, Elaine. Number five, Mike Washington's self-portrait. I think I've got a description for Mike. Uh, Mike isn't a member, um, but he's uh, he's attended several of our meetings. Hopefully, we'll we'll get your membership uh, when we get back, Mike. Uh, we're trying to trying to provide a lot more a lot more value. Uh, he says uh, this challenge caught his attention. He used his computer camera. He set up a Zoom meeting with himself, one hand clapping sort of thing, uh, using an image of. A Peter Max poster for his virtual background, he took a screenshot. The resulting image revealed his face to appear soft and slightly defocused. I'm looking at it now, absolutely. Uh, I ran the PNG through Topaz Sharpen 2.0, which allowed me to mask in the areas I need to sharpen, which did a pretty decent job. I then moved it to Topaz Studio 2 and added the FX, masked it, uh, masked in just my image using a com uh, combination of simplify, remove details, impression to give that more graphic look. Uh, he then added a texture layer uh, on an inverted mask area, and now that we have a little bit more time to experiment, he thought he'd try using what he had available uh, without leaving his desk and trying to recapture some of his 60s karma. Well, he absolutely nailed the 60s karma, and I'll tell you what, Mike, you were on the cutting edge because one of the trends I see nowadays um, is, uh, is people taking portraits of other people, and they're running it through this VHS filter. Remember the VHS filters, Nancy, and uh, VHS tapes, Nancy and Mike, when the tracking oh God, wasn't yeah. out? The tracking just, just had a problem. That's, that's hip and popular nowadays, which Mike's portrait looks like that, and then you add this, this just totally awesome hippie 60 background. I think it's a really good shot. What are your thoughts on that, Nancy? Um, wait a minute. Don't get too personal about that, because I remember those backgrounds, dude. Um, it, 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 it's a nice create. It's really um, expresses his how he sees himself. It's a great way of expressing who he is. You know, I, I had this little bear of mine about using other people's art, but I think in this challenge, for this reason, it's actually used, being used to tell the story. Absolutely. So I really like this. What are your thoughts on this, Mike? Well, he's the only one that tried this. Um, I've been playing with them and swapping in backgrounds. Uh, but the only issue I have with the, the copy I have is the background looks sharper than he does. Um, you know, so that kind of, it kind of feels like he's been cut and paste and it's not quite as sharp as the background. Uh, but, but the colors are fantastic and the spirit of the image is good. Uh, I think it tells you a little something about, uh, about Mike. Look forward to uh, seeing him in person. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the thought uh, Mike Mike brought up a good thing. The fact that yeah, I, I and it, it was in the back of my mind, but I, I just didn't. It just didn't click for me. But yeah, the, the the fact that you've got a very painterly look to yourself, and then and then the very sharp background. Um, take take the background down, kind of the same look, and it would look very very like I said painterly. Or or keep working on it. I think you did a really good job at masking and, and getting yourself in there. But keep working on it, and uh, you're you're well on your way. And if you make a million dollars applying that VHS filter for portrait sessions, you can give me a couple bucks. How about that? Number six, Game of TP, self-portrait by our own Mike Thomas. Mike, can you describe this for us? Well, this is my take on uh, Game of Thrones. <laughs> um... Don't judge me that we had that much toilet paper at one time in the house. I have two <laughs> women here. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I, uh, uh, you know, I've got a backdrop there. I stacked all the toilet paper, set myself in front of it. I broke out my, uh, granddad's shotgun and, uh, um, you know, 
set up a couple of strip lights on either side to, to light me up. Um, and then a little, a little adjustment in, uh, in Photoshop. Fantastic. I'm not sure. I'll let, I'm going to let uh, Nancy uh, comment on um, on the shadow on your face because at first it's like, oh, no, the shadow on your face. But you know what? I I think yeah, it really Yeah, I'm not exactly adds. loving that part. The, right. the shadow down the face is the one, the one drawback I see on this. And the only other thing that um, bugs me is those yeah. bears are way too happy for the kind of crap that's been going on in the world. <laughs> Go ahead, Nancy. What are your thoughts? I, I love the, how it's picking up the detail on the stock of the rifle. Um, that's pretty sweet. And, um, you know, it, it, it's a nice capture of yourself. Like I said, I'm not really in love with the um, shadow across your face. I don't. I think that's a bit too sharp of a shadow for what I'd like to see. It looks like a little softer would be good, but otherwise, you've got a really good capture and a really good um, aspect of our times. Absolutely. Let's move on to image number seven. Why bother? By Janet Payton. Uh, let's start with. Uh, I'll start with this one. I think we start with Mike for his for his image. You know what? This is this is just like Mary Lou's. It's perfect. It's kind of it's kind of the reason why I don't have pants on right now. Because why bother? The good thing about Wait, it is also I don't, have, I don't have the camera on right now. I got a I got a pair of boxer shorts on, but you know it, it, we're all stuck at home. We're working at home. Why, why get dressed up? Why put makeup on? I haven't shaved in probably a month. So you know it's kind of that whole why bother thing, and and when you realize that there's so much so much you can be doing during these times of, of downtime, why bother? What do you think, Nancy? Um, I think she's captured that totally. I mean, like, you know, part of her still cares, and part of her doesn't give a flaming fig uh, about it all. So I, I re really think that this captured that uh, nicely done. What are your thoughts, Mike? Uh oh. First of all, she's a great sport. This is, you know, this is a fun image, um, you know, and I think the exposure looks pretty good. I mean, if you look at the couch, you look at her scarf, uh, you look at her top skin tone, uh, her hair, I think uh, she did good taking the, the photo. Um, my image, I lose detail in her in her top, her blouse or something. There's no detail in it, but that doesn't matter. Um, uh, uh, the humor in this photo is it's fantastic. It's kind of interesting. You, you brought those up, Mike. The, the the technical quality, because if if I sit there and look at the technical quality, yeah, you, you could you could argue that um, you know maybe maybe change your angle so that 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 corner isn't there. Uh, it looks like on camera flash, and and you could really do a much better job at at putting those catch lights in your eyes, but. But this really hammers home the fact that when you've got a really good concept image and you execute it well, a lot of those uh, a lot of those little flaws kind of melt away. Let's go over to uh, let's go over to image number eight, "In the Bush" by Julie Bennett. Nancy, you want to start us off? Um. That, well, she's hiding out. Um. Very definitely. I'm not sure her. Um, Reasoning to that, um, the focus is definitely on the lovely branches in front of her. Um, she is, you know, standing behind. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why. I do like the light coming across the shoulder in the back, but I'm not sure what she's trying to tell me in this. What are your thoughts, Mike? So, I think uh, I think it's a nice image to show she's maybe a little camera shy. Uh, is trying to show off the flowers and stuff, but uh, um, you know I think uh, the image quality is fine. Um, there's some highlights in the background that are a little distracting. Uh, she's got a pretty smile. I wish I could see her eyes a little better, um, but uh, I think maybe she's a little camera shy. But just, it's not a bad image at all. Could be her way of social distancing as well. He writes, I love my bottle brush tree and so do the bees. Oh, she's in this tree that the bees happen to like. She's a she's a, she's a brave one. They were buzzing all around. I call this one in the bush. Using my tripod, I focused on the tree where I planned to stand. And then I turned off autofocus, took the shot with a 10-second timer. And after some minor editing in Lightroom to soften some hot spots of sunlight, this is what we've got. Very nice, Julie. And uh, and fantastic, fantastic look. I'm, 
I'm kind of zooming in on your face. Um, only you'll be able to tell us uh, right now if if you were able to really nail that focus on your face, or did you or did you hit that the front of this front of this bush? Almost looks like the the leaves might be a little bit sharper, but uh, but if you can tell us in the chat if you nailed that focus or not. Number nine, we have Julie again with. Um, I don't know if this is right or not. I have Slef Portray, and it's a photo of her drinking a margarita, so it may very well be called Slef Portray, or the person who gave me these images may have uh, may have messed up. Let me see if I can find it. On the on the information I've got, it says self portrait. It would be cool if she totally totally uh, misspelled the words. She wrote, "My I happy think hour she, drink I is think a that margarita." Was intentional. What's that, Nancy? I think that was intentional. Enough tequila will make you misspell anything. I hope it is because that would be that would be awesome. For <laughs> um, her favorite happy hour drink is a margarita. Uh, this one is called Hora Feliz, meaning happy hour. The setup for this took a little bit more effort to figure and focus where I would be in the shot. I use an old tripod as my target. My camera was on another tripod. Once I had the focus, I switched to manual focus, quickly picked up my props, and took the shot uh, with the remote set for 10 seconds. I'm going to pass this over to you, Nancy, and then also to Mike. But before you go, what's your what's your uh, drink of choice? Mine mine tonight was uh, Campari on the rocks. Go ahead, Nancy. Uh, I'm drinking homebrewed um, de decaf unsweet iced tea. Ooh. I'm an exciting girl. <laughs> um I love, I love, I really like this actually. I love, she does have her focus in where her focus should be, it looks like. Um, once again, I'm, it, uh, I'm having that, um, fight with my, um, images coming through Facebook, but it looks like I'm seeing hair and eyes where they should be. Um, it, it's cute. It's amusing. It's, God, it brings us some humor. I, I love it. What's your thoughts on this one, Mike? Oh, so this is the jewelry we know. Um, although we never got to see her drinking, uh, it looks like Florida's, uh, suiting her well. Uh, but this is a good, uh, good self-portrait. Uh, I wish I could see both her eyes in it. Um, but, uh, it's, it's humorous, it's fun. Um, and, you know, it's the technical qualities are, you know, they're, they're fine in terms of exposure and, and composition and stuff. Um, I think that's a good effort. I agree. It's a it's a little flat on the lighting. I think she can pop the lighting up a little bit, but I like the I like the thought that the eye is is out. Um, maybe maybe if the eye was completely blocked off, I'd like it a little bit more. But I I like the idea that that she might be uh, what do they call it uh, half sheet to the wind or sheets to the wind or something. She she may this may be her second or third margarita, and and we'll have to make sure that next time we do a uh, a club dinner, we'll we'll go to that night nice Mexican restaurant and and get. Uh, and get pictures of margaritas for the table. Good job, Julie. <laughs> Let's go to image number 10, self-portrait, and this one's by me. Um, and this is actually, uh, I think it's about 10 years old, but this is where I really learned the, the, uh, the fact that you need to suffer for your art. And this is a tintype. I think it was probably about 15 to 20 seconds. And, uh, and I did kind of like what Julie did. I, I took a, uh, I took something where I would be sitting. I, for this one, I actually took a pillow off the couch upstairs and I put it where I thought my face was going to be. And I set this old wooden, uh, I think this is, a, I think this is probably a, a half plate, which is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So I took this old half plate camera and focused it. I set the lights up. I went upstairs and poured this plate and I came down and, and I put it in and, Opened the shutter up, uh, or excuse me, took the lens cap off. The, the lenses don't have a shutter. And then I, with my foot, I have a, I have my foot on a, uh, on one of those surge strips with the, the light on and off. And it was, it was for this magazine called Guru Magazine. And, uh, and I didn't, I didn't think that a tablet would have enough UV light to, uh, to come out. But, but man, it came out really good and, uh, and everybody was pretty happy with it. But it's, you know, 15 set. Doing all that, um, having having a, a, a plate that's uh, that's slowly drying, and when it dries, it's no longer any good. Nancy, you know this. Um, oh yeah. But when it's uh, when it's dry, it's no longer any good. So the the more I'm sitting here fumbling and wasting, the the drier this plate's getting, and uh, and yeah, it, it it just everything just fell together. But it's it's where you kind of learn that uh, you kind of learn that, that that life isn't fair, and you got to suffer for your art and, and all that fun stuff. What are your thoughts, Nancy? 
Well, John, you know I love making you suffer, so it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, oh yeah, I remember that, John. That was back when I was taking pictures of him at the Farm Museum for the Carol Kenny Times, so <laughs> I remember that iteration. Um, it's an interesting way of taking a self-portrait because it is you. It is a self-portrait. That is you, and you've done that, and now you're taking a portrait of that portrait, so you're multi-layering this. Um, but I really do love this image. What are your thoughts on this, Mike? Well, no, I love the image. You should have taken something current, though. You should have done something uh, for the cha- for the challenge this week. Uh, but yeah, this is a great image. There's real you. You still look like this. A little older, but you, you know. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the the detail in in your clothes. Um, yeah, the, it just goes to show that, um, even, you know, that, you know, the first, the first camera, the first time I ever went to the Rebel Camera Club, um, the speaker was there with his 1860 film camera, and the theme of his talk was that photography hasn't uh, noticeably improved in over a hundred years. <laughs> uh, and he ignored color photography and he ignored the ease of use of, of, uh, cameras now, but, uh, he showed us images uh, from his old, you know, his old-fashioned, uh, old-technology camera that were just fantastic. Um, and this, this just kind of goes the same, the same way. Uh, that's a great image. It's kind of, um, and uh, it, I think it's the real you. I um, I struggled, I struggled against taking, taking the, you know, the, the standard boilerplate self-portrait. Um, or or pull this out and and actually have something to show for it and actually have maybe a little bit of a story to tell you that um, that it was it was very difficult and um, but I, I thought I thought this this more more captured the the spirit of the assignment even though yes it's it's a good decade old but uh, but absolutely and 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 absolutely when when you saw that that one that one presentation on the the old camera and the fact that nothing's nothing's really changed. Uh, photography actually went downhill uh, after George Eastman ruined the party with gelatin because this this collodion <laughs> process has, has no grain whatsoever. Let's go to uh, image number eleven, self portrait by Richard Stolarski. Let's see if Richard has anything he writes to us. Yes, uh, bathroom photo, bathroom photo. No, I don't think we have anything from Richard explaining um, explaining the self portrait. So let's uh, let's start with Mike on this one. Well, that's definitely rich, uh, and it tells you a little something about him with the uh, golf club there. Um, I don't know. Can you play golf right now? That's probably enough social distancing you can get away with. It. Um, the uh, you know it's a good good picture of him. The colors are good. The details good. Um, yeah, I don't have any. Uh, any real complaints about this at all? Uh, maybe it's been better if it were on a golf course, but maybe we can't go to a golf course right now. <laughs> maybe Richard's practicing in his backyard. Uh, I love it. I, I love it. it. It tells me everything I need to know about about him. Actually, uh, with everything there, uh, he's got that Adirondack chair in the back. Uh, I bet he sits back there and 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 drinks something something tasty back there every once in a while. The only problem I have is that that fence diagonal and that tree sticking out of his head, which is extremely, extremely difficult to avoid with a self portrait. So, so with everything everything said, I, I think it's a it's a heck of a, a heck of an attempt. What's your thoughts on that, Nancy? Well, it obviously tells us a lot about himself because there are his golf clubs there in front of him. That's the important thing. He's <laughs> standing behind them. Um, once again, I'm looking at this on the. Well, it came through on the phone as a very small image. Now it's clumped up a little bit bigger. I'm getting a huge amount of. Um, uh, you know, pixelation when I bring it up on the Mac. It's, yeah, but it, you know, it's a nice, nice look, nice composition. He definitely captured himself. A perfectly good self portrait, and it does tell us about himself. Great. Let's go to uh, number 12. This is Self Portrait by Angel Kidwell. Uh, let's start with Nancy on this one. Uh, yeah, this is, this is dramatic. I mean, first of all, you, it's like, where, I don't know where she is. Oh, wait, down there. So it's um, dark, moody, um, but there's a lot in there to think about. There's, 
normally this I would look at this and say, oh, what's this there? Um, not that great of a photo. But then I look at it and I, oh, wow, there's her, there's her mood. There's this whole liquid mass moving up above her. This is pretty interesting. And I'm wondering, yeah, this, you know what? This is um, shot in her bathroom spigot. Mm-hmm. The same one with the lights. What are your so thoughts, Mike? I think it's an interesting nope. piece. What are your thoughts on this one, Mike? Uh, so it's it's definitely moody. Um, it, it's interesting that there are actually multiple images of her uh, in the uh, reflective. You can see one up top. You can see one down below. I bet some of the others are in there, buried in there too. Um, I I think I would have liked to see you know a tighter crop on the the image below, uh, but. Yeah, this is definitely different. It's definitely uh, creative, and it, it has the same moodiness as the other image of this, uh, uh, of this faucet earlier. Um, but the, the the fact that she looks on my screen, that she, you know, her reflection looks nice and sharp, and I can definitely recognize that that's the same goal. I think that's just... Absolutely. I, I think the same way as you would with that, uh, Mike, with the crop. I... I just think that the left and the right just isn't adding anything to it. Where when you've got that column in the middle, and I think I see a third angel in the middle. Uh, there's there's likely several more. Um, uh, this would be a really dramatic, uh, like if you cut it, kind of like a thin a thin portrait. You know, just just taken off a, a little bit on the right, taken off quite a bit on the left, and I think that would just be such an amazing shot. Or like you said, just just zoom in on. Uh, on the, the bottom portrait, but but then you miss out on that that really amazing reflection of what I can only imagine is is the handle. Mm -hmm. um, but absolutely beautiful, beautiful tonality on this, beautiful conversion to black and white. Um, everything about this is absolutely a winner. Go to number thirteen, self portrait. Oh man, Chuck, I feel your pain. Self portrait by Chuck Gallegos, and uh, let's start with uh, let's start with Mike on this one. Oh, so this is great. So it's definitely Chuck. Uh, you know, even with the reflection, I, I can tell it's Chuck. And I know a little bit about Chuck, and I know what he likes to photograph. So he would definitely rather be out and about uh, uh, photographing landscapes and stuff. Uh, given the, you know, a good statement on the times, you know, he's in the house, he's looking outside, uh, can't go out right now, uh, uh, can't travel. Uh, you know, I think took some foresight to set up his camera outside in such a way that he's got the reflection and himself in it. Um, I think this is a, a really creative uh, self-portrait. And, and it's enough of him that, that you know it's, it's Chuck, so that's good. Uh, absolutely. I love I love that I can tell it's Chuck. I love I love the fact that, that the, the right and the bottom is, uh, is centered enough. And and I, I love the fact that he left in that little square of of the window on the top left hand corner too. I don't think it would have been as as powerful to my eye if if he would have brought it down and cropped it at that little that little segment inside the window. But uh, but man, if this doesn't scream our, our current situation, I don't know what does. And it's and like Mike said, it's it's just perfect. I see you perfectly. I, I threw the modeling of the trees. I see that it's a nice day outside. I see you want to go outside and play or do whatever you want to do. And uh, and we just can, unfortunately. What are your thoughts on this, Nancy? Oh, it's a it's a great um, observation on isolation. You know that you're lo basically losing yourself behind everything. You know you're you're trapped on the inside, and the whole world is outside of you. Yeah. Um, beautiful work with using the uh, window pane framing within the the photo. Really like that. Um, I really like the way he's. This was some work to set this thing up. What Chuck says is he tried to capture a bit of the sense of cabin fever. Uh, he had his camera on a tripod outside on his deck, and he shot through his kitchen window, and he tripped the shutter with a cam ranger. Move on to number 14, Isolation by Jarvin Hernandez. Do we have any information from Jarvin? We do. Jarvin writes, I captured this self-portrait in my home studio with the Panasonic Lumix S1. At first, I set the timer to 10 seconds, but I couldn't get the focus right, so I decided to use the Lumix Sync app. And that's what I'm doing where, uh, that's what I'm doing there, uh, with my phone is taking the shot. I'm pretty happy with the results considering I usually only take landscape images. His settings were 160th of a second, second F4 ISO 1600 with a 24 to 105 lens. This is absolutely gorgeous, uh, gorgeous shot. 
Um, I'm lighting how I'm liking how all the, the lighting is. And, and Jarvin, you say you, you mostly shoot landscapes, but this is a fantastic, uh, fantastic environmental um, occupational portrait. There you you know working at your desk. Uh, maybe you're a little a little centered for it, but um, but hey, that's that's okay. What are, what's your thoughts on that, Nancy? Um, actually, I don't mind so much that he's centered because there's so much pointing. You know, both of the angles on either side are coming in and pointing to him. He's obviously the focus of this, and you've got these lovely angles coming in from the side from the paneling and the portraits on the wall. Um, I love the fact that it is, you know, there's light underneath the desk, so we're seeing, you know, he just doesn't disappear into this dark desk. You know, you can see who he is, see where he is, and it shows, it, 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 it shows his work. It, this is what he, what he is most proud of, and it's obvious in this. So it's, it's really nice. I, I'm very appreciative of this. Any thoughts on this one, Mike? Uh, it's a, a great environmental uh, portrait. Uh, you know, I can tell a lot from him uh, about him in this photo. Uh, he's got Lightroom up. He's watching Netflix. Those are. He's. Uh, I like the little sign in the corner that says uh, "Jargon Photography." A little like just a hair more space on the half the Y there. And then he's got all of these beautiful images on the wall that, that uh, I'm guessing that he's taken. I wish my man cave looked that nice. Um, I think the only thing I, I would have liked is. For me to call. I guess he is looking at the at the, uh, at the camera. Um, but uh, there, I would have liked it a little more if I was uh, a little more obvious that he was uh, looking at the camera. But uh, it's a great environmental portrait, self portrait. That's kind of what we what we what we're hitting again hitting against now is a lot of our cameras have these these apps. I know Nikon's got the Snap Bridge and and I think Canon's got something as well now. And I'm sure Panasonic and Sony does too. Um, but but I see a lot of these shots where where people are kind of holding their phone when it's kind of one of those things you got. And I do it too. I do it all the time where you, you take a shot and you really should have put it on a timer. Put your phone in your back pocket real quick and then and then gone gone without it. Um, Nancy, do you think that's kind of that's kind of cheating? What are what are your thoughts on the um, the whole kind of connecting to your your camera via a cell phone thing? Uh, you know, I'm a luddite, John. I, I try to avoid <laughs> anything like that. <laughs> What's your thoughts, Mike? Does, does your uh, does your camera have that feature? It does, and I used it when I uh, took my self portrait. Very cool. You just don't you just don't see it because I hit it. You hit it. Very cool. Number 15, Self-Portrait by Terry Jackson. Let's see if Terry says anything about this in my cheat sheet. Do I not have Terry? I don't think I have anything for Terry. Mike, why don't you start us off on this one? Uh, um, so, guys are the uh, windows into the soul. I, I like seeing, seeing the eyes. Um, my image is a little, a little grainy, but... Uh, um, the composition's nice. Uh, there's highlights in the eyes. Uh, seems to be a little uh, detail in the hair. Um, maybe it's a, a really cropped image. I'm not sure. Um, I would have liked to have seen it a little, a little sharper, a little less grainy. Um, but I like that no one else focused on their eyes like this. So I, I think this is really a, a good, good try. It absolutely stands out. Um, it's just a very striking image, and it and it proves that that you don't need to have the entire face in in the frame to to work it. Um, you, know, you can cut off certain things as long as you do it uh, do it creatively and do it do it the right way. And this uh, this is absolutely very striking. Um, if I had to if I had to be nitpicky, it would be this little little bit of light up here. Although I'm not really sure. I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of on the fence. One two three. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I would take this little pe little bit of white out here. Um, that way you've got three three different fields of color, um, keeping to the kind of roll threes there. Uh, what's your thoughts on that, Nancy? Um, well, actually, I, I would call this paranoia, is what I would love to call this. It looks like somebody watching in the rearview mirror. And I'm really curious, because at, at the bottom of the image, there's kind of like a softened tan line going all the way across. Um, so it, I don't know, was it shot in the rearview mirror? I'm not sure. Uh, you know, the, the, the image that I'm looking at on my on Mac is totally pixelated. I'm looking on the phone, and it's um, you know, it's it's 
looks like, it looks like a good, confident image at that size. I mean, focus is where it should be. Um, I love the um, graphic way the hair comes across and takes that line to the right. Um, so it's it's a nice, it's a very nice depiction. But I'm really curious about that bottom, the very bottom of the photo. There's there's like a fuzzy tan line going all the way across. Hmm. Maybe if Terry's in chat, she can let us know. Is that it? Do we have any more images? Oh, we do. There's one more. There's Christine. One more. one more. I can't. I can't leave out Christine. She will beat me. Uh, this can one. I watch? This one definitely suffered from from Facebook itis. Um, yeah. But this is Christine's attempt at a self portrait. And how about I? Let's see if I can read anything. Does she give us any information on this? I think she does. Uh, sat outside a minute next to the house to get out in the sun. Traditional cell phone shot as my Nikon shots were not in focus. She could have cheated. She totally could have cheated and asked me to help her, but I would have said no. Um, I'll keep working on getting better. Non-cell phone shot sometime. And unfortunately, you can't see it. This is Christine next to, uh, she's very proud of these lavender, these little lavender plants we have down our, our uh, down the side of our house. What do you think about this, Nancy? Well, uh, I love it. She gets 10 points for wearing the, phylum, uh, the, the cyanotype t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Definitely gets points for that. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a very nice, it's your standard selfie. I mean, here we are. Um, we're kind of like the, here's me. Oh, wait, here's the hose bib on the house, too. But um, I, I think it's cute. I think it's a, you know, a nice capture of color. Um, probably not the world's best selfie, but it's Christine, so it counts. <laughs> How about you, Mike? What do you think? Yeah, I, so this is it's, it's it's a nice photo, of Chris, but I think she could have could have done better. I I I feel this is closer to a selfie than it is a self portrait. I make a slight distinction there. Um, you know, the color of the shirt's my. I don't really like the house you know, cutting through her head uh, in the background. Uh, you know, maybe if the angle this this ever so slightly different, because there's some pretty trees behind her. Uh, things like that. Um, but uh, she's also got the, it feels like she's got the sun in her face. So her eyes are, are, are not all done. I can't see her eyes as well as I would have liked. Um, but uh, I think a nice try that, you know, especially if they were emphasizing her, her beloved uh, plants uh, down there. I think she was close, but not quite, didn't quite have it. Excellent. We have gone really, really late. Uh, we, we, we decided to, to try to do a little bit longer on, on this stream because uh, at first we didn't have that many images, but we had so many people just, just go ahead and, and submit. Uh, so we really want to thank everybody for submitting. Uh, I hope we didn't keep you up too late. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Mike, thank you so much for, for being here and, and, and going through our little audio technical issues and, uh, and giving us your, your thoughts on these images. No, no problem. And Nancy, thank you so much again for being back and and doing the same. We hope uh, we hope you saw some some interesting stuff and uh, enjoyed your time here. It's always an education, John. It always is. Excellent. Well, again, thanks everyone for 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 joining us. Uh, if you like the uh, if you like the photo assignments, please let us know. Uh, it helps us keep an idea of uh, of what we can do with programs and live streams for as long as this quarantine thing is under effect, uh, and then we can you know. Give somebody something creative to do and, and gather together and share our love of photography. So once again, thanks for joining us. Thanks, everybody, for participating. And we'll see you next week. All right. Bye.